Another wonderful episode of Diaspora Link exclusively on Ghana Web TV. I'm your host, Diallo Sumbri. I'm very excited about my guest today, as I am about all my guests, but I'm also very appreciative because I was able to catch her while she was in Accra just for a short time, passing through, running, doing a lot of things, but she agreed to come share her story with us on the set today. So, without further ado, it gives me great pleasure to introduce you to. Nadu Plaka. Now let's dive into the interview and learn a little bit more. Welcome to Diaspora Link with our guest Nadu Plaka. As we do every episode, before we get into our interview, let's find out a little bit more about our guests with choices. Nadu, this is what we call choices. It's really simple. I'm going to give you two choices, and then you choose one and tell us why. Okay? Okay. Pretty simple, right? Supposedly. Okay. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Lagos versus Accra. Ooh! Ooh! Very <laughs> different. Accra. Accra. Why yeah. Accra? I, I, I guess maybe... South African Knights. Versus Accra Knights. South African Knights. Oh, so like, no question. No that. question. <laughs> no question. That will be South Africa will have their own year of return because you know after Ghana it has to be somewhere. It has to move around. And I do feel like all eyes are on, on South Africa now. But from growing up there, from being younger, it's always been a vibe. Like the music, it just touches your soul in a very different way. The vibe very is different. real. Mm. The vibe is real. Okay, how about this? Hip hop versus Afrobeats. Oh, Afro beats. Afro beats over yeah. hip hop. Yeah, I mean, okay. no, it's fine. It's like old school hip hop. Like I'm, it's funny. Whatever you want it to be. Then hip hop versus Afro beats. Afro beats. Want, for okay. Me. Afro beats for me. It's funny because we were out one night at um, front back, and um, Afro beats came on. Everyone was dancing and hip hop, and they had the new stuff, and it was just like, oh, what is this? New hip hop. Yeah. And they, the crowd didn't really. Uh, it was like, uh, 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 uh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You needed yeah. some diamonds on your wrist to yeah, dance yeah, right yeah, to the yeah. music. Uh, yeah, no, Afro beats. <laughs> okay, Fufu versus Banku. Ah, Banku. Banku. I don't actually like Fufu. This is the thing. I can K not They so might not much. let you back into the country, you realize that. But I like Banku. <laughs> Banku's good. No, Banku, it just has a different taste for me. I, I never really enjoyed Fufu. But is, it, is it the cassava plantain versus the maize? Is it like the, the base? Is it the fact that it's maize you like that better? Yeah, it tastes a okay. bit better for me. It tastes yeah. a bit better for you. All right, one more, and I know you're going to hate me for this one. You're going to hate me for this one, but I got to try. Afropunk versus Afrocella. Oh, Afrocella. Oh, that oh. was easy. I thought Chella. it was going to be different. <laughs> Chella. It's, a it's a different vibe. Okay. All right, to be fair, it's difficult, and that's not fair to do that. <laughs> no, well, it's now, not Now fair. maybe I'm backtracking. <laughs> Don't backtrack. They both have different assets that they bring to the experience. I know. So the choice is, is if you had to choose one, and you chose Afro Chella, there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. There's no yeah. right or wrong. Thank you for playing this game with us. <laughs> As you always know, why do we play choices? Every day we wake up, we all make different choices in life. Our choices should not divide us further. Our choices should only serve to help us become more clear about who we are and bring us closer together. So remember, just because you may think differently or choose differently from someone else, it doesn't mean that you have to be opposite or opposed to them. You guys just have different choices, right? Just different choices. Okay, now we're going to find out a little bit more about Nadu with Top 5. Now do. This is our top five. Are you ready? I am ready. See, these games are not too bad, I'm right? Ready. <laughs> You're doing great. All right. Top five. I'm going to give you five categories, and you just choose your top in each category. All right. Number one, your favorite book. If it's not your favorite book ever, one book that you would recommend that everybody read. What mm. is that book? The Celestine Prophecy. The Celestine Prophecy by... Ooh, James read something. James I read something. Okay. James, but James something, yeah. Okay, and why this book? 
changed my life. Okay. It was I, I, ironic, actually. So one of my ex-business partners mm -hmm. who completely fell out, I'd known her for 20 years, she gave me that book. And when I read that book, it just speaks about intuition. Mm -hmm. That feeling that we get in our stomach, if you've had an argument with your partner and you feel a way because you know maybe they're hurt, you know if you took a left turn but you, something told you maybe it was right. It's being able to listen to your intuition as small as it may be. Mm -hmm. Being able to read people's energies and feel like what do people want to get from spaces and how to navigate. And the way it's told is a story of wow. searching for scriptures that each of these scriptures tell you a bit more about how to kind of communicate and learn more it sounds like a really interesting book priceless Excellent. very very I, I've bought that copies. was easy for you. I bought good. because I buy them for people. I'll wow. probably buy okay. you a copy now. Okay, and thank sent you. To you because it's it's done so much for me. I always want to pass that on. I appreciate that. Next one, top musical artists across every genre of all time. You get to pick one. That's that's horrible. I know. Every music genre of all time across the board. If you just had to pick uh, one name, uh, it might change next week or or whenever. But for Diaspora Link, we want one. Lauren Hill. Lauren Hill. That's what's up. That's, you gave Lauren props. That's <laughs> not, I love Lauren. I I'm, love Lauren. I'm, I absolutely love Lauren. Nice. Yeah. Why Lauren Hill? I met her. I met her here when she did. Okay. Um, uh, I was here at that show at, um, at BBNC. Mm -hmm. she, just, she's Lauren. Like, it was either going to be a Lauren, Erica. You know what I mean? Like, that's where we are. Right. So she's just the embodiment of just. Of who Pure, and where we are. yeah, black, just ever love, love Lauren. No problem. Yeah. That's my homie. <laughs> I still listen to Zion. Like yes. whenever, whenever it comes on, I still can't listen to it once. I still have to rewind it and listen to it three I or four that. times. Timeless. The miseducation of Lauren Hill, ladies and gentlemen. For those of you who have no idea who Lauren Hill is <laughs> or what we're talking about, get the album. You'll love it. All right. <laughs> um, <clears throat> favorite food. It can be. A dish or a kind of food? Mm. Okay, well, seeing one. as we are here, Contomere. Ooh, that's your favorite. My favorite. Listen. And okay. Garden X Jew, but Contomere for me okay. with fish. Listen, listen. Mm. This is what I'm going to do for you. Mm. I, if I would have known that <laughs> before now, I have the absolute best Contomere for you. In my village, a small place called Yame Bechere near Kafordria. We absolutely make the best contumere, period. It's not palava sauce. Mm -hmm. There's no egusi mixed in. That's There's right. no, That's good. it's contumere. Mm -hmm. They go pick it. I know, there's some in my family's we garden. We go pick it and cook it. Okay, oh. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all know I'm hungry already. <laughs> All right, okay. contumere. That's I'm going to hold you to that. Okay, but with rice or boiled yam? Uh, actually, with a motor. Ah. Yeah, that for me is very different. My aunt's like, what are you doing? And yeah, I, they and don't I have do boy plantain as well but they're like what and I'm just, just let me have it the way I like it yeah, you know that's so interesting about God you try to mix two foods people are like yeah. no 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 we don't serve <laughs> it like that we don't take it that way you can't have it <laughs> all right um favorite place to vacation in the world it could be a place that you've already been or a place that you want to go Zanzibar Zanzibar that's a place you've been yeah and hands down the most amazing experience of my life I probably lost about two stone out there as well because every day you're just walking on beaches drinking coconut water nice. in the sea just oh and the people amazing amazing excellent last one your favorite sport to play to watch you, favorite sport whether it's it could be a combination of playing and watching it could be just if you had to pick one sport what would that sport be Hmm. Netball to play. You said netball. Do you know what netball is? No. Okay, it's a British thing. What is netball? It's like basketball, but you can't travel with the ball, <laughs> and it's it's predominantly for women to play. You can't travel with the no, ball. No, you can't travel with the ball. What do you mean? You, uh, can't, you just you can only pass it. When we finish rolling, I have to show you. Okay, some I'm gonna look up. No, I'll look up netball. I'll look up netball. Move. I've never even heard of it. Yeah. Which is, okay. Yeah. So, so netball to play. Netball to play. Um, I don't to watch? Know. Is gymnastics considered a sport? That's considered a sport. I love watching gymnastics and synchronized swimming. I just think okay, it's incredible. Gymnastics like, yeah. Okay, gymnastics. Okay, great. I mean, I watch football quite often, but I'm not like, ah, I'm fanatic. You're not like, like no. crazy like no, some no, people. No. Okay. No, yeah. Thank you for participating. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is Nadu Plaka's top five. 
Remember, as we continue to build this bridge in the diaspora and we begin meeting people from different places, whether we meet in Accra, whether we meet in London or the U.S., let's find out more about each other. And asking someone's top five is a perfect way. It's a great icebreaker to get to know somebody, to get to know kind of what moves them, what are some of their favorite things. That's going to help you build a relationship because the only way we can continue to build the bridge between the continent and the diaspora is to find out more about each other. Now. Let's dive into this interview and find out a little bit more about exactly who Nadu Plaka is. We are back with another wonderful episode of Diaspora Link, and I am here with my guest who you've gotten to meet a little bit, Miss Nadu Plaka. Nadu, how are you? I'm good, Jelly. You? I'm good. Thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm glad that I was able to track you down and catch you in between this visit while you're here in Ghana before you fly off Indeed. to your next destination. So thank you for your time. Any time for you. Oh, really? Of course. Y'all hear that? Any time for me. <laughs> so y'all know Diaspora Link is, is real because she just said any time for me. All right, here we go. Nadu, so you are from Ghana, right? Even though I thought you were from somewhere else. Yes. You indeed. are from Ghana. I am. I am half Ghana and half British. Okay, half Ghanaian, half British. So your father? Father? Ghanaian. Ghanaian. My mother, British. Your mother's British. Yes. Okay. Uh, what part of Ghana is your dad from? So we're talking pre colonization, post. Well, give, us, give, give us a history lesson. Oh, give us a <laughs> do you know what? It's been very interesting because on this trip and mm -hmm. every trip I come, I always mm -hmm. try to learn a little bit more about my history. Okay. So my grandfather was the first assistant to President Nkrumah. Wow. Benjamin Placker. Okay. And as I've been coming back, I've been meeting with my grandma and learning more stories. Okay. So she is from the line of savages, okay. savage family name, um, whose family home is in Cape Coast. Um, but at the moment, they live in Latibi Okoshi. So, yes. My father was born in Accra, but as a diplomat's son, he traveled the world. They were in Russia. They were posted all over. Okay. So I've been able to yeah, track my lineage and find out exactly yeah, who I am. Exactly who you are and where you're from. So have you been able to visit your family's hometown and your family house here in yeah, Ghana? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I've been, I visited Latibi Okoshi this week. Um, okay. We have some renovations to do, of course. Right. Um, but I think the next trip I want to go to the Savage House in Cape Coast and, okay. and do a bit more, learn more all the stories I hear just from we come from the Lawson family so we were okay. Ak Plaka Lawson okay but Ak Plaka back then they said it meant fat Lawson's so my great 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 grandfather was like forget this <laughs> we are not fat Lawson's I'm going to go down here I'm gonna start my own village and he dropped the Ak Lawson and so we became Plaka oh, okay so yeah okay. very small we're airways so totally is mixed as well yo it's isn't how does that feel like is it how does that feel as you you know your dad is Ghanaian you're you're a Ghanaian but you're tracing your family history and you're finding out more things how, how does that feel it's really exciting I've started making notes like okay. stories from my elders because the stories my my grandma has been telling me you put it in context to so like this day age like my generation you're right. just like this is what you went through or you know you know, your grandfather was pissed off with the rest of the family, so he was just like, yeah, forget you guys, I'm out. I'm going to start my own village. Like, it's, it's really interesting and it's fun to learn. I think it's really important. Right, really important. Were you born in Ghana or were you born in... I was born in London. You were born in London. Yeah. Okay. So how often have you been traveling back and forth? Is it like every year? Is it, was it, oh, you schooled in London and didn't come back to you as a teen or adult? Tell us a little yeah. bit about your story. So I schooled in London up until mm -hmm. the age of 13. Okay. And then I went to school in Lesotho, which is landlocked by South Africa. Okay. Um, I was there for a year, then went back to London. And I'd only been to Ghana when I was four years old. And I came mm. for my grandfather's funeral. So that okay. was my only real interaction. My dad having been posted all over the world with his father before he decided to settle in the UK mm -hmm. and he I guess lost touch with some of his you know Ghanaian roots okay. and as the eldest son he still had responsibilities mm -hmm. but obviously a lot harder to implement when, when you're not here so I had been working across the continent more so in Nigeria and my family were like you're so close why are you not going back home I'm like where the money reside I am following <laughs> the money right now so if um i have an opportunity to go to ghana then i 100 percent will and i right. put it out to the universe and within 
I think three to six months, I got a phone call that invited me to come to Ghana to work with Fuse ODG and okay. work on Tina Festival. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, that was the start. And since then, I think probably been back twice, three times a year. Nice. Yeah. So, so from the time that you were four, mm. you hadn't been back to Ghana until... It was 30 years at the time. Wow. Yeah. Wow. It's bad. But, but you... Well, it, it is what no, it I is. No, I think it's, it's bad. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Ghana was always in your heart. Always. It was always. It was always something calling you back. Yeah. You mentioned traveling the continent. Right, you mentioned um, schooling in Lesotho, and you were in Nigeria doing business. So that means that you've you're familiar with the continent. One hundred percent. One hundred percent. And you've traveled to different African countries, yeah. right? Yeah. What like what are some of the African countries you've traveled to? Senegal. So my father lived there for a while. Mm -hmm. um, Kenya, Zanzibar, Lesotho, South Africa, um, Swaziland, Namibia. Wow. I'm you've sorry. been you've been around and not enough there's still i want there's to try and go more? to at least all 54 there's so many to do right yeah it's just interesting and every it's funny because when i read your book the first kind of i opened the first chapter <laughs> and as soon as it opened up i was like oh this is hard hitting this is exactly what it is depending how the country's been colonized you're literally going to be setting the stepping stones of how you need to navigate yes and i tell like my team when we come over mm -hmm. the way we work is we have to learn from each culture and each culture is different from greetings from handling money from you know bartering it's all yes. part of it but it's really interesting yes. to learn how to navigate and i love i love it all so ladies and gentlemen it is time for Africa in 60. Our guest has no idea what we're about to do, so I'm going to tell her. Nadu, mm -hmm. this is something that we call Africa in 60, and we'd like to see how many African countries our guest can name in 60 seconds. Oh, okay. See? That's not, that's not deep, right? <laughs> no, that's hard. Let, let's see how you deal with the pressure, because I know when the pressure comes, it's a little bit differently. So we have our clock set up. We have 60 seconds, and we will go in three... Two, one, go. Mauritania, Egypt, um, Libya, Ethiopia, Sudan, uh, Ghana, Togo, Benin, Nigeria, uh, Senegal, Gabon, um, Cameroon, uh, DRC, um, or let's go on this side, Somalia, um, Kenya, uh, Zanzibar, Tanzania, uh, Swaziland, Botswana. Oh, let me see where I, am I down here. Did I say Namibia? I'm not sure. South Africa, Lesotho, um, uh, Madagascar. Uh, where am I in the middle? I've missed some in the middle. I don't know. What's the time? <laughs> um, we got more time. Keep going. Uh, Morocco. Oh, who are these northern fake countries? Um, <laughs> Did you call them fake countries? I did. I can't believe I already said Nigeria. The, I am. That's all I can think. Where are the pyramids? Oh, I said Egypt. Oh, I didn't hear I you. I said Egypt. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, time. No, you did good. You got about twenty-eight. Wow. You got about twenty-eight. That's you good. got about twenty-eight. Okay. okay. You got to see. Is, is see. that like where's the ranking? No, we. I can't tell you okay. that. We're, okay. We're gonna we're gonna put up a leaderboard so everybody can see kind of where they are. But you know, and we do Africa in sixty, as you all know. Um, because we want people to know that Africa is a continent. It's a vast, large place, 54 countries. And in each country, there are various cultures, there are languages, there are so many different customs. So as we begin to bridge the diaspora, we want people to know that no one speaks African. You just don't go all the way out there to Africa. There's a country in Africa, and there's a city in that country. So keep that in mind. That's African 60. Thank you. Now, do you're such a good sport. <laughs> that was fun. I was trying. Was, was that it fun? Was good, it was okay. Good. I was trying to get you a little bit nervous by telling you, hey, we're going to do something. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. That <laughs> oh, that was the do. one you're not going to tell me? That's the one. That's the only that's one the I'm not going to tell you. That's the breeze, right? <laughs> Don't have to work. Okay, so you travel back and forth. You um, came back here after 30 years, right? And But since you've come, you said two to three times a year. Yeah. Yeah. So that means that you've seen other people who don't have Ghanaian roots come back and forth to yeah. Ghana. For you, what is it about Ghana that pulls people? What, what, I mean, maybe for you because your family, but, you know, your business has brought you here and other things. What, is it, what are some of the things about Ghana that you love? I think 
going back to your point of not saying Africa, but <laughs> from an African perspective, mm -hmm. stepping back on the continent always feels like I'm recharging in some way, shape or form. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it's an opportunity to explore, learn and really tap into new culture. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So for Ghana, I think for other people who maybe this is their first time coming, it's definitely been led by I think stepping away from that traditional, oh, Africa, we live in huts and there's nothing <laughs> here. Um, hut life. Yeah, that life, <laughs> hut life. You know, we all, we all came from there. But right. being able to really explore new adventures, I think mm -hmm. the year of return was something that put Ghana in a very different position mm. um, than it has been before. Like eyes are on Ghana for different reasons now. People are understanding the potential, oh, that it's not what we've seen on TV being brought up our whole lives. There's actually, you know, things that have been going on here right. for years. So I think it's, yeah, being able to explore. For me, it's home. Mm -hmm. I always think as Ghana is home, second to, I would actually, no, it's, it's one of my homes, I would right. like to say. Um, and just being able to be around my people. Like, it's funny, sometimes I go out here and I'm like, oh, a white person. And like, it's a subconscious <laughs> thing, but it's slightly triggering. Right. I'm also aware I'm a brony, so I'm not naive to that, uh -huh. but it's also being around your people all the time, it just a different kind of energy. And the work I do abroad, I always try to ensure that I'm working with black people, be it our production company, be it our suppliers, be it the team that we mm -hmm. work with. So being around your people is just a different energy. A totally different energy. Mm. You get that vibe, mm. right? You know, in my book, I call Ghana the enjoyment capital of hmm. the world. Enjoyment. <laughs> <laughs> enjoyment, right? A lot of enjoyment here. And, you know, when people either come, you know, through our birthright journeys or when they come with us to visit, and I always tell people, let me know when you're ready for an Accra night. And they say, well, what is an Accra night? I said, if you're not having Wache at 6 a.m., <laughs> in the same clothes you went out in. <laughs> you haven't gone home to sleep, then that's an official I cry night, mm, mm. is you start and you have to at least go to three or four places yeah. because there's that many places yeah. to go and that many things to do. So you schooled when you were young in Lesotho. Now, did you school again for your, your university, your college in the in UK? London. Okay. yeah, and, yeah. And what did you study? I studied event management and music and media management. Okay. And I'm now doing my master's in live event design. Nice. And where's, where are you doing that at? So it's in the middle of the UK, in the countryside. Just in the middle, so somewhere. Like I'm literally the only black person there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. All right, so now let's talk a little bit about some of what you've done in your career that has led you to where you are now. Mm -hmm. And I'll just let you walk us through it. Well, uh, it's been many, many years. So 14 years that I've been in the events industry. Okay. Um, started off off the back of my degree. I was very fortunate to be headhunted from university. Okay. So straight out of university, I had a job, I was working. Um, but what I found was some of my friends and colleagues um, from uni, they couldn't get a job without the experience, but then couldn't get experience without the job. So you're stuck in this cycle, this loop of, you know, not being able to move forward. <laughs> you know, that reminds me of most deaf line. Um, why do I need ID to get ID? <laughs> I'm sorry, go ahead. I had but it's, the, it's the same theory and principle. Right, it's the same theory and principle. And so I was like, how do I help mm -hmm, more mm -hmm. people to be able to kind of make this transition? So we started an educational course that I started to design. And with that course, it, we developed it into a 12-week course okay. where we teach everything that I learned over my three years on my degree to all of my experience and decided to say, we're gonna give 15 students an opportunity to learn everything. We'll physically give them some money to produce their own event mm -hmm. and they'll produce it. So you get nice. the vocational and the practical experience of being in the event industry. Cause it's not always standing there with a clipboard and a radio and everyone thinks, you know, you're in charge of things. And That's wonderful. Yeah. That's excellent. So and you, you are still doing that course now? Man. Like I'm trying to get some of my white um, counterparts at university to come and work in in Accra because mm -hmm. you you want to know how we feel when we're on site as the only white uh, black people uh. let's see how you'll feel in the middle of Africa <laughs> <laughs> to be specific <laughs> Ghana and see how you get on right because culturally it will you know wake you up <laughs> wow that's a great idea yeah that's a great idea so 
from the time that you've started your company, that's what you've been doing for 14 years? So for 14 years, I've probably had about three or four companies. Okay. Um, companies that I didn't necessarily put the energy into, companies that had crazy business partners. You know, we go through the ebbs and flows of running a business. Um, but in the last two years, we settled with, we had a rebrand um, with the Zoo XYZ, which is my current company. Okay. Um, and with them, we have been doing stuff with some amazing clients from Afropunk in New York and um, South Africa to Pan Afro Link, um, mm -hmm. NBA player Luol Deng, mm -hmm. working with him across mm -hmm. London and Ghana, um, SoundCloud, Amazon Music, a lot of UK artists, um, nice. the festivals here, uh, Tina Fest, Afrochella. So yeah, a nice, we're spread out well. Spread out very well. <laughs> nice. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about uh, Nadu's company, The Zoo, XYZ, or as they say in London, XYZ. I'm learning <laughs> so much. Uh, and we'll get back and talk more about this. We'll be right back. Peace, global African family. My name is Diallo Sumbri. I'm a co-architect of Ghana's Year of Return 2019 and I'm the president and CEO of the Adinkra Group. For the past five years, we've been bringing loads and loads of people to Ghana. Many of them, their first time on the African continent. Their first time putting their toes in the African sand, in the African soil. And so many people have had their life changed. Our birthright journeys are curated cultural immersion journeys centered around reclaiming cultural identity, exploring your ancestral heritage and celebrating African resilience. It gives me great pleasure to introduce our Birthright Journey Partner Program. It's really simple and you really don't have to do much other than email us at info at theadinkragroup.com. Now what makes a great Birthright Journey Partner for our program? Are you a leader? Are you an influencer? Are you that person that your family calls on to organize or do you automatically know that that's your job? Are you somebody of status in your community? Are you a community leader? Are you that person in your church or in the school? If you are, you are the ideal Birthright Journey partner. Do you believe that every person of African descent should have an opportunity to touch ground on the continent of Africa? If you are, then you are the ideal Birthright Journey partner. It's simple. We're going to show you how you can travel to Ghana for free. Not only can you travel to Ghana for free, but you can actually get paid to travel to Ghana. Really simple. Just contact us at info at the and set up a discovery call. You'll get to travel. You'll get to travel with your family and friends. You'll get to travel with your community. And the best part of it is that it'll be free for you or you'll even earn money doing it. So again, info at theadinkergroup.com. We look forward to seeing you in Ghana. We look forward to dancing with you in Ghana. We look forward to eating fufu, eating jollof, eating wache, aha. Uh -huh. Make sure you contact us now and we would love for you to become a Birthright Journey partner. Madasi. And we are back with Nadu Plaka from the Brooklyn Zoo. Anyway, from the Zoo XYZ. You know, I had to throw my, <laughs> I had to do my best ODB impersonation. All right, so Nadu, mm -hmm. your company that you've rebranded and that's spread out in African countries in the UK, the Zoo XYZ. Talk to us about the name, like. It's, it's, it's such a different name. I'm really interested to know how you came up with that. So it's funny because I wanted, so the company I had before was NP Presents. Okay. So Nadu Plaka Presents. Um, the one before that was Madame Blah. Because that's all I feel like I ever do in the industry. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Just, you know, trying to make deals of work here and there. Right. Um, and I was, I was ready after having a negative experience with a business partner. I wanted to, you know, transition the business and then from NP Presents I was like I didn't want something that you could maybe know what it was I, I, I like I wanted it to be very spontaneous and be like well what, a, what is that right if someone says 
you know, the zoo was at. So we initially came up with the zoo. Don't ask me why. It was actually in Ghana when uh, my uh, colleague and I came up with it and we mm -hmm. were on the back end of a Ghana night, an Accra <laughs> night, which I think explains even more. Um, and we were just like throwing words and like, the right. zoo, like, oh my gosh, that works. And so, you know, did some research online. Obviously, the zoo.com was gone, so, right. and .co.uk. And I was just like, oh, and then it was like, oh, .xyz. So I was like, oh, this is a new domain that actually hasn't been established yet. Mm. And often when we're talking in events, we're saying, okay, XYZ, this is how we're going to structure it. Exactly. Things. And so it worked. And thus that's, the Zoo XYZ was born. You know, that's interesting <laughs> because, you know, I had my own theory. All right, let about me add on zoo. to the theory a bit more. I, I, I had my own theory about the zoo and where it came from. But go so, ahead, go ahead. It's also the multitude of like personalities and okay. people that we deal with in any given like project. There's always things that are moving. You have to learn how to, you know, nudge people's egos, how to get them to do business the way you do. So mm -hmm. it's like having an understanding of there are so many different things taking place under one roof. Right. Um, so yeah, the zoo. And I always loved the word menagerie, but I didn't know how to use it. So the zoo just came forward. So I want to know your theory. <laughs> that was it. Oh. Well, well, my theory was I've been on the front side of events and the back side. And most people, when they see the event in its finished form, a well-done event, they just see the well, they see what you want them to see, yeah. right? Especially for your customers, you don't want them to see what goes into it. But I know on the back end of that, it's a zoo. Yeah, <laughs> Sometimes it's a zoo, yeah. just exactly what you said, the number of personalities, the number of people. And it's like managing a zoo. You got this section over here, you got this. You, everybody eats something different at a different time. or mm. you know, And putting all of that together to make it an attraction for somebody to come pay an entry fee and get the whole experience. So for me, I was just like, yo, that was mad creative. Like, it's really a zoo. P p you know, <laughs> people who are not into events really do not know. Yeah. They really have no idea. Um, we, we, I'm sure we both all have a lot of stories about things that have happened at the ninth hour before an artist goes on stage or before yep. the gates open. Um, yep. So, <laughs> so many stories. So many. So let me ask you this, because this is Diaspora Link. And... A lot of what we want this show to do is to share personal stories about why people have chosen to do business in Africa, right? Because it's a choice a lot of times. You don't have to look for business in Africa. You can turn business offers in Africa down. Um, and you could focus on the UK. You could focus on other parts of Europe and the US. So why is doing business in Africa important to you? It wasn't a choice. It was my calling. Mm. I think I've always been very much about people. Okay. Um, anyone will tell you, working with me, I'm always for the people, the team. Like, how are we establishing that kind of network and, and growing the community? Mm -hmm. And schooling on the continent, having my roots back here, like, it made sense for me to come back and also to spread the knowledge far and wide that mm -hmm. I have. I don't feel like my knowledge and information should be left with me. Part of that legacy is being able to impart more knowledge onto other people and allow that knowledge for myself. Mm -hmm. It helps me to grow in territories, to understand how events are done in Ghana, how they're done in Nigeria, how they're done in South Africa, mm -hmm. what works, what doesn't. Can any of my knowledge or experience contribute to that? So, yeah, it was... It was, destined. It, it, was, it, was, it was destiny. <laughs> but you had to hear that calling. Mm, mm, right? Because mm. uh, they say, uh, uh, what they say, many are called, but few are chosen. Mm. Right? So a lot of people are called, but not everybody answers that call. So how have you found doing business in Africa for events um, different from UK and the US? And you know, I always say that it's okay for us to talk about challenges mm. um, because we're not really focusing on the challenges, but there's somebody watching who wants to do business here, who's into events management and maybe wants to come here to do that. So what's some of the differences between the various countries in Africa mm. you work with, with South Africa, Nigeria, Ghana, other places in the UK or the US? So many, so, so many differences. I think I definitely have had to make sacrifices over the years in order to fulfill this. Mm -hmm. um, the differences across each country, again, I think reading the first chapter of your book will just give you an insight as to where I'm not being paid to plug. I'm just saying. No, but no, but thank you. Thank you. No, thank because you. you have to understand the people first. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Understand who you're working with, how they work. Being a woman 
mm. working on the continent has its own layer. I was about to say, I'm sure that that's a whole nother... Being a woman in Nigeria as a Ghanaian or British was another layer. Being mm -hmm. from the diaspora coming back home, it has another layer. Like, all of it does because there's also hierarchy. There's also respect. There's things that culturally have been embedded mm -hmm. for generations that you have to now step into and just grab the reins a bit more. So, for example, when we were working in Nigeria, <clears throat> the uh, runners, so these are the people who... Literally, without them, you will not get stuff done. At all. They're picking up stuff, they're running it to places, they're making sure people are in the right place at the right times. At the end of the event, they all sat down with myself and my other colleague, who's also British, and um, they were like, thank you. Thank you for just treating us like we're human beings. Mm. And my dad always taught me that it doesn't matter when you like who you're working with right. if it's someone who's older than you when they go home they are the head of their household they are the breadwinner they are the person who is coming back just because they're working with you now as a runner at a smaller role it doesn't take that away from them right. and so it's always paying back that respect and ensuring that people have spoken i'm not dictating to you to do something i'm not going to ask you to do something that i wouldn't do so if i'm asking you to pick up rubbish you will see that i've picked up rubbish mm -hmm. which also isn't a very african mentality <laughs> it's go and pick <laughs> Like, there's no small question. boy, small girl, please yes. take all of this. <laughs> yes, but for me, I was like, that's not how I work, and mm -hmm. I can't change that. Mm -hmm. Now, it's difficult because I think you get to an element of capacity. For me, I was like, working in Nigeria, I could only do a month because the stress, the conversations, the level, the dealing, like all of this builds up from having a Western upbringing to mm -hmm. then, you know, integrating it. Right. You have to take time away. Mm -hmm. um, Africa, Ghana, it works at a very different pace. You have to adjust to that pace. This trip here, ah, it took me a week to settle in because I have to do the Accra city tour. I have to go and party to show face in different places. And then I have to also kind of come down and settle. So yeah. Right. And, and you know, I tell people all the time, Accra is growing at a rapid pace. Mm. You can be away for six to 12 months and when you come back, there are how many new clubs, how many new restaurants, how many new lounges, how many new roads yeah. or changes so it's, it's growing at a at a really rapid pace what are some of the logistical challenges that you have um here with events like do you have problems getting materials in these countries do you have to always ship them from south africa or turkey or dubai or something or you've got it or, so not <laughs> everything is here not everything is here and this right. is something i'm really working on like as basic as comms so radios on event day there isn't well, we know of one that's here, but even so, stock is limited. You know, does it work with the radio frequencies? There's so much that has to go into it. Rigging, near impossible to get things. Pyrotechnic, all of these things do often have to be flown in from different countries right. on the continent to make sure, you know, we have it here. But I think in time, this is something that just will be developed. I'm definitely seeing a change in the industry and the change in the way people are, you know, having their experiences because we've had positive experience and negative experience of international companies mm -hmm. coming in, bringing international people to do all the work as if Ghanaians are not capable. Mm -hmm. We've been here. <laughs> but they have been here right. doing events before. It was on an album that brought everyone and put eyes on Africa. So I think it's just refining that and just trusting the process internally. And I will always be, I guess, an ally for work to be done by Africans for Africans. You know what? I've seen miracles right and by miracles i mean you know during the year of return we did a lot and i remember us having an event um at cape coast at the slave dungeon and i remember showing up maybe three or four hours before the event right and we had a lot of people on the way mm. um like 250 300 people i knew were on the way to cape coast <clears throat> so i remember let, let me go early i remember showing up and nothing was set up <laughs> and i was losing it <clears throat> like yo what is uh, da, 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 da. and then i was like diallo mm -hmm. shouts out to my brother ernest i'm sure he may see this and ernest was like i got you the confidence that he said that with okay when i tell you in three to four hours honestly you would think that it was set up from the morning like there wasn't, it was done. And I was just like, okay, there are miracles. 
It's just how I don't know works. how. I don't know how. Like I understand. I just. I wish we could do that earlier. Yeah. Without like. But why? Because it gets done. I know. And that's the thing. That's the mentality. But it will get done. It'll get done. <laughs> but it's like the stress. Yeah. High level. I had to learn the hard <laughs> way as well. On site. 4 a.m. I'm like, I'm not going to the bed. So the things here that I've been calling them since 11 a.m. They told me they're coming. Why is it now gone past 11 p.m.? They're telling me they're coming. 4 a.m. Mm. We got to be back on site at 7 a.m. Go to sleep for an hour. Come back. Ah, I was like, oh, okay. And that's when I started working. And I see people like, oh, it's your first time doing an event here. <laughs> Don't worry, you'll be fine. <laughs> Don't you'll be worry. fine. Don't stress. <laughs> like you have to not overthink it because right. it right. works differently here. It definitely works differently. Mm. It definitely works differently. So. You mentioned a lot of big names. You mentioned Afropunk. Um, you mentioned Afrochella. Um, and so talk to us about Afropunk. You did that, you've done that in South Africa. So Afropunk takes place in Bahia, um, New York, in Atlanta, Paris, London, and South Africa, so six. So I was cons a live event consultant for them for a year, um, and now supporting them in terms of entering new territories, um, developing on the continent as well. And, uh, and Afropunk is a pretty large event. Like, each Afropunk event brings, what, thousands and thousands mm. of people to a particular city or, or place, and people Absolutely. are flying in from all over the world, no matter where it is. Yeah. Talk to us about the economic impact of some of these festivals and events that you work with and how how African tourism departments can do better to support mm, mm. some of these events because of the economic impact yeah. that it brings. The economic footprint from these events is massive. I think even from year of return you would have seen here and like using Afropunk as a case study, I guess looking at South Africa. Mm -hmm massive so December is normally a time of year where everything closed down and shuts so we're able to provide job provide opportunities provide you know more for the the country and I think governments can use these as beacons mm. you know utilize this opportunity to be able to have new people new money mm -hmm. coming into mm -hmm. a country to be able to see actually how can we make this work for us to benefit us longer than this period of a, a month that you know maybe someone's right. in town like where can we tap into tourism and what does that look like so yeah mm -hmm. I think it's about having conversations with the right organizers that are supporting mm -hmm. the economic growth you know internally as well I don't want it to just be ever international companies coming in and, and doing and then you know bouncing back out it means to be how are we working with companies on the ground what corporate social responsibility are we doing what, mm. what are we giving back to ensure the longevity of business and the economy for you know wherever we're entering for, for the for the economy of, for the local economy the of local where, economy. wherever the event is Precisely. so I take it I would assume that you believe that large festivals of such that you've worked with um, can be a part of this idea of Africa beyond aid to an extent, mm. right? So let's say you take a festival like, Af uh, like Afropunk um, in a place like Accra. If I, could Accra handle a festival like Afropunk that size once a quarter? Ooh, once a quarter, that's a lot. <laughs> 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 to be fair, but the, I think there's levels of this. Okay, okay, so is it an international festival that's coming in? Right. Who's the target audience? Who are they, you know, what are they looking to generate from a uh, mm -hmm. perspective of is mm -hmm. it revenue? Is it just exposure? All of those things kind of have a hold on it. And it's funny because we do feasibility studies for organizations. Okay. So if you want to enter a territory, come and have a conversation with us. We work with the team on the ground to be like, this is what it will cost. This is what you'll need to do. Who you need to speak with. These are the stats. This is what you should be looking if you want to work with a particular audience mm -hmm. to be able to get I guess the lay of the land of the best way to work when entering because it's easy to say okay once a quarter to do an event but there are so many <laughs> different layers to that to be able to actually identify you mm -hmm. know what mm -hmm. type of mm -hmm. event is best coming in who's your audience and how you can maneuver okay. so yeah so for up-and-coming event planners artist management firms and other diasporans um, from the UK, from the Caribbean, from the US, who want to work in Africa. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> that's the fact. Yeah, number one. A, that's the quick, number quick one. answer to call you. Number <laughs> one, call you. What piece of advice would you give them? What, what advice do you have for somebody who wants to come and do that? Mm. Because 
I'm sure, like you, I talk to a lot of people who want to come here, and everybody has big dreams, which is good. And you try not, I try not to burst the bubble when I see somebody floating with all of these ideas and this romantic idea of what they're going to do when they come and how it's going to work and what will happen. Um, even knowing that this particular person hasn't been, hasn't spent time, and I try not to just be like, calm down. Yeah. None of that is going to happen yeah. because... That's nice. <laughs> <laughs> when you get here, you'll see. I would say don't be naive. It's mm -hmm. all of that. I think all of that naivety and also an air of ignorance can come with we are this brand, we have this name, this is how we're going to enter. And I have seen first-hand examples of that. You know, Cardi B, an example, we're going to bring this massive show, book 30,000 people, book out the stadium. Sorry, do <laughs> Ghanaians listen to Cardi B like that? Mm. They don't. Just because you maybe have a certain audience in another country on the continent right. doesn't mean it can easily be replicated here or anywhere for that matter. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'd say it's take time. You have to put the work in to really understand the market, understand your audience and understand how everyone works. Mm -hmm. So yeah, naive and ign ignorance, leave it, that at the door. <laughs> okay. Now what piece of advice would you give Ghanaian suppliers, mm. vendors, um, and potential workers or staff that, that, that people like you would want to hire here? What piece of advice do you have for them that will help them be better on ground partners for events and festivals? Transparency and continuity. Okay. Like, so one of the things I've found is also, you know, just communicating what you really want to happen. So your expectations. Mm -hmm. um, I always try to move as transparent as possible. If I'm going to tell you that I need barricades, for example, and I know there's only one supplier that does barricades, then tell me when I need to come to you, when I need to have a certain money ready by, so at least I can plan ahead. I think sometimes it's very flitty, you know, people, you know, say they can do something, but then con, oh, I'm on my way, but really you're at home, or you're in Tema, and you're coming to meet me, and they're gone, you know that's going to take some time. Um, so it's just, yeah, being very open. Really? So Tema and East Legon is not, no, it's not a 15 minute trip? No, <laughs> I know. Not. And so it's just, I think it's, with those expectations and mm -hmm. communicating, it's easier just to navigate the way of the land. And I understand, you know, when we did the course um, in 2019, we were here, a lot of uh, suppliers were like, we have issues in terms of we're asked to put our own money up, you know, front in terms of being able to be paid. We don't get paid in time. And it's very difficult. Mm -hmm. Like I, mm -hmm. even working on some of the projects here, I come in, I'm about business. Right. This is the process and this is the structure. And if I can ensure that the money I'm bringing into the country will stick to that process, then everyone else works accordingly. And we've seen it. It right. works, it's flawless, it's easy. We have great relationships. And when we come back to these suppliers, they know, oh, we're working with them, don't worry. It's gonna be done. It'll be there. Mm -hmm. But it's a two-way thing. You have to show that respect in the same way. So yeah, just be honest. Be transparent and let me know the expectations. There we go. Mm. And I do. I want to thank you so much for coming to share your time because I got you. Like, yeah, yes. yeah listen, listen, I'm out. listen. All of y'all out there who've been trying to get and I do, I was able to get her. <laughs> that means that we're special at Diaspora Link. She took out time for us. So I want to thank you again thank you. for um, joining us on the show, for sharing a little bit about yourself, about your company, um, and just for giving some insight for all of our listeners so we can see what event management really looks like a little bit from the inside. Yeah, I look good today. Normally sweaty and stress, everything. <laughs> but today is different. Today's We're different. okay. All right. Thank I'll you. do again. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for tuning in, and we want to thank our guest, Nadu Plaka, for joining us and sharing uh, just a little bit about herself and her journey. Only here on Diaspora Link, exclusively on Ghana Web TV.
connected with the man who is considered a jack of all trades when it comes to music. Some call him an industry plug, others a musician, an entrepreneur, a connector, a show promoter. The list goes on and on. I am here with the man who got all the links when it comes to music in Ghana and beyond. This is Talk Attainment on Ghana Web TV. When we come back, I introduce my guest. Welcome back. This is Talk Attainment on Ghana Web TV. Before I introduce my guest, I would love to congratulate him for all the amazing things he's done in the industry, for connecting our artists to foreign people and, you know, being a true son of the land. I have here with me Small God. Hi. I'm good. Good to have you. Thank you for having me. Great. So we're just going to delve more into <coughs> career, the things that you've achieved. You are really a big man when it comes to music industry. I don't even know how to qualify you because I cannot say you're a musician. I cannot say you're a promoter. It goes on and on. Some say you are uh, an entrepreneur, but we're going to find out more uh, in the course of our interview. Now your name, Nana Apiese, it sounds like a royal. I'm very particular about that because I know in Ghana, names do have meaning. So are you a Ghanaian royal? No. No. Then Charlie, it's like every name you pick sets your side is unique. Mm -hmm. Small God. I've had people say, oh, does he consider himself as a God? But I've heard stories where you've explained the yeah. meaning of small God. Akronyami. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just to issue disclaimer to all those who yeah. think, oh, he thinks he's a God. No. Yeah. He's good at what he does. I must tell you that. But as he says, chief for Ekasi Akronyami, just say, all the brains. He's got a bigger brain. He knows everything. <laughs> That's what. <laughs> that's it. That's, but I, I heard you say uh, you got it from your grandma. Yeah, grandma gave me. Yeah. yeah. And then you decided to. Great. I mean, now, I know in Ghana, when we talk about celebrities or the big men, people wonder, oh, can they do things on their own? Personally, I just want to find out, can small god cook? Does he make his own meals? Or I, he got I, I all did, the boys? I destroy the kitchen. I'm oh, a good yeah? Cook. You're a good cook. I mean, I lived with my grandma and my mom, so you know what, what that means. So what's, what, what can you prepare? Like, well, I know you can say everything, whatever, but what's your specialty? Whatever I want to eat, I'm really on it. On it. Like. But then some will say with celebrities, you've got people on your hand, someone who could give you, oh, you got an interview here, someone who does the laundry, someone who got everything. So of course, to that's honest, help. I'm a guy that's has one. I do my own laundry, I do my own cooking, I mm. do everything. Even though I've got a girl, I still do things myself. Oh, even though you got a girl, I'm going to... Yeah get back to that later. But then what Ghanaian language do you speak fluently? Like um, the languages you're good at? Chi. Chi. Ga. Ga. I'm still learning. I was there a bit and I'm learning like this more. But the chi is prepared. Uh, chi and ga affect it quite. Eh. Me oh yeah, dear. Mm -hmm. Me and me to me. But I know your background reading about you. Yeah. You know you spend most of your life outside Ghana and inside here. You yeah. you've been around. For yeah, a long yeah, time, yeah. but do you feel that you are sometimes being tagged as oh he's a foreigner in your own no, motherland? Do you get that normal, feeling? It's normal. Like wherever you go, mm -hmm. you're always tagged as somebody else. Like for instance, I was born in, in London. Okay. When I came to Ghana, they call you the, the London boy. When you leave here, went to Amsterdam, they call you the Ghanaian or the London boy. Mm -hmm. When you leave Amsterdam, come to Ghana, they call you the Amsterdam boy. So it's like you don't belong. It's very hard. It's very hard because you don't belong anywhere. You just Unless you go back to London. Then even there, they say, oh, the Ghanaian boy. So you just... <laughs> I can imagine. I don't know what you want to call him, but you don't belong anywhere. You just... But then the word belong in the industry, because I know you do music. Yeah. In the industry here in Ghana, in, in, do you feel like the belongingness, like you've been accepted? Well, um, accepted. I mm -hmm. just started the music, to be honest, but I've always been behind the scenes, as I said. So I did my work. I've done the ground work. I've done the footwork. I've done mm -hmm. everything. It wasn't like I wanted to belong. It's just something I was doing. So when I say they needed me, they say so. It wasn't like, oh, you don't belong, so we're not going to help your people or whatever. Mm. I'm helping people, so it doesn't matter whether I belong or not. It doesn't just, even matter. You're a Ghanaian, and that's what's most yeah, important. I was just getting the job done, so it doesn't matter. But now, I guess I've done enough noise enough. Mm -hmm. You have. You completed have. My my name so cemented your name that's it that's so, it yeah, but then are there plans to fully relocate to ghana or I, if I'm you here have now. I'm here now. you have now I'm here, yeah. well okay yeah let's 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 talk music let's talk music i know you you've been here as you said you've been in ghana but then for someone who stayed outside 
yeah. in Ghana. Yeah. Some say, oh, our system not working, economy hard and all that. How would you describe the system, the economy, which currently everybody is complaining well, about? Um, I would say anything different from mm. what's happening. It's happening in all seats. It's only in Ghana. Everywhere it's happening. But I mean, it might be harder in Ghana than other parts of the world because other okay. parts of the world, they, they're using a credit system to survive. In Ghana, I don't think we have the credit system, so it's just hand to mouth or Charlie, whatever. Yeah, so have to hustle. Have to hustle to make it happen. So it's harder here, would I say. Apart from that, I guess we know how to use whatever we have to make it work. Okay. Now, let's talk music. Yeah. Usually when um, we say small god, we know that he's really bridged the gap when it comes to local artists and foreign. Yeah. You've got some of the craziest links I can ever think of. Now, take me through the process. If a Ghanaian artist want to work, collaborate with a foreign art, what are the... Uh, with the, me, it's not, mm -hmm. it's not per se you want to work with a foreign art. I okay. don't like that. I make beats. If you have the talent, I put you on. If I like you, cool. Now, I search who I feel like okay. fits sonically with you or the collaboration fits with. Then when, when I do get it, I come back to you and then you listen to it. Also, you have, you have a say. It's not like you're forced to be on there. Yeah. You have a say. You listen to it. If you feel like what I've done is good enough for you, it will move forward. Okay. Do you know it's not like you come to and say, I have this song and I want you to help me with Drake and it's my job to go find Drake. No, it's not. Cause I do I, my thing. I just make things up. I if get I, it. it. Like we're sitting here now and you say, okay, we work for Ghana Web. You want, oh, you're thinking of going to England, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I'll be like, oh, guess what? I went to school with a girl that controls BBC over there. Do you want me to link you? Link it. Now nah, link you. Whatever you guys do, that's so busy, it. Because I know you guys are in the same industry. Mm -hmm. Get it? That's what I do. Yeah. Now, now, my question is because I've, uh, I've heard people say, oh, why is it that Nigerians, they can quickly collaborate with a foreign art but in Ghana it looks like it's just once you can single it out that's why I want to find out yeah, is that a process where you can lead like it's not a a process just you have to mm -hmm. build your connection people you have to build your relationship with people like okay once you do that then it's easier to have that conversation when when it's time to so it's all about connection yeah, and the about links. Bu building your relationship with people it's, okay my one is just about building and connecting with the right people and I'm in the right circle then when it's time I need Mr. A or Mr. B. Your Miss B. I could say, oh yeah, I met Miss B here, and I hate, and I see oh, what's happening. I got this. What do you think? And maybe if she cannot do it, she could say, oh, I got Mr. A. I could connect you with Mr. A. Okay. And I go through that. Then before you know, the job is done. Some so will say it will I, not I, be I, that simple as you are saying. I always try to make sure that I'm two calls away from what I need. Maximum two calls. So if I could do that all the time, then the job is being, it goes quicker. Smart move. Yeah. Great. So currently, who would you say is the most sought out after uh, Ghanaian artists when it comes to the foreign market? Like, which Ghanaian artist? It, can, it might not be just one. Like, mm. you can, can you single out some people who are, like, really breaking the ceiling where people oh, want to lot, work with? At the moment, there's a lot of Ghanaian artists that's actually kicking in, kicking the doors. Okay. I mean, Sack is doing his thing. Sack, Kodia. Promise is doing his thing. Mm. Um, Black Shave is doing his thing, Jack is going, there's Kitty, all these kids, that's, the names are a lot, but a lot. now they're all going for Kevin Boy is pushing, they all put Camilo's come out now, they all, they're all pressing, they're all putting Ghana, they're waving Ghana map, so, the flag, should I say, okay. so, we're, we're waving, we're pushing, so, at least, they're all taking a step to go through that, that door, so, I would say, we're not trying, we are trying, we are trying. We are trying, great. One thing I observed is the blue monkey and small Ooh. god. Yeah. As you, I, I cannot even say I haven't taken notice of the blue monkey. Uh, what is you, the inspiration behind as it? She's my, my travel partner, my companion, my friend. I mean, you know, sometimes I, I could call my, my friend and I'm like, oh, I want to go to New York tomorrow. Uh, let's go. My okay. friend be like, no, I have a date with my girl or something. Now I'll call my other friend, I have work, I can't go. So. I created this thing in my head that I needed a travel part, um, partner. Okay. So, how? I found this little blue monkey <laughs> that okay. kept on bugging me. Like, I went, I think I saw this monkey in four different cities in one week. The same monkey. The same monkey. No lie. <laughs> the same <laughs> I monkey, saw but that. Not from the same person. 
Okay. But in different people, but also in one country, but in, that, in different cities in that you country. You saw a blue monkey. This blue monkey kept on hunting me, just hunting okay. me, just hunting me. So I'm like, you know what? Finally, you know, I just get it. I got it and it couldn't fit my bag because my rucksack was full. I always travel with just a rucksack, so mm. it was full. So I hanged it, like the hand, I stapled the hand together on the, on the back so that. So I it's not a real monkey, but it's a blue monkey. No, no, I'm telling the story first. Okay. So I stapled this teddy bear monkey on my bag and that, that was it. Everywhere I traveled, it holds on. So I never took it over again, it stayed on. So as years, like, that's about 15 years ago. So as years went along, I must have gone to Tamale. And one of my friends has monkeys. And I'm like, hold on, I have a, I have a blue monkey that I travel with. I want a real one. He goes, oh, my monkey's pregnant. So if he gives, when he gives birth, you come back. Have it. So I said, oh, cool. So about maybe, you know, two months back, like, he goes, oh, um, I have a surprise for you. He's my friend, so he always says that, I forgot my monkey. I forgot about the monkey. <laughs> so he said, ah, oh, I'm coming to Accra. I have to come by road. I go, why don't you fly? Like, it's easier to fly, blah, blah. He goes, no, I want to come by road. I'll call whoever. He calls me, he got to Accra maybe about, I don't know, late time, about one o'clock. Went to meet him and he gave me the this monkey. little cute, about this small, in my hand. Just like, a baby. Wow. Like, it melts your heart. So I took the monkey home, just trying to study the monkey, reading about monkeys, just studying it and just finding out how I could bond with the monkey. I mean, so I took it to the vet, got his injections, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Find out what he likes, what he doesn't like, how he likes to play, blah, blah. So, and my son had a son, Freedom. So Freedom saw the monkey, Freedom fell in love with the monkey, started playing together. How do I now separate the monkey from my son? It's not possible. So now I have a little family member, SG, in the house. SG. And that's one of the family members. So, so the blue monkey started from the teddy bear, now, to, to a the real, real ones. That's how you see. Cause so I, uh, my logo is just always the monkey, the blue monkey. I knew there was a story behind it because I was so, like, yeah. I know you're very deep. So I was yeah. like, I was going to ask him, what's up with you and yeah. that blue monkey? Yeah, so that's... That's the G. story. That's the G. Always hanging out. Is, that, is, is, is your monkey a female or a male? A female. Small oh. girl. So maybe you can reproduce. You never know. And maybe I could come for one when it happens. Um, maybe we could talk about that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe. Okay, beautiful story there. But back to music. Is uh, which veteran uh, artist do you think you can partner with? We've got a lot of Ghanaian musicians, olden days to reign. I think now, I used my mom used to play Amachi Day a lot. Amachi Day. Back in the days when I, when, I, when I was younger, and obviously Reggie's like the grandpapa. I like Reggie grandpapa too. Grandpapa Reggie. So those two, I mean. Amachi or Reggie? Yeah, these two are. I mean, they change. Or they are part of my journey because I listen to Reg Reggie started hip life. I mean, we're, we're all listening to hip life, so I mean, it's part of the journey that it would be nice to collaborate with him too. Then, obviously, how much it was like when my mom was sad at home or when she's cooking and all that. That's what they used to listen to all this old school music. Mm -hmm. This I used to call them bugger music, but that was what they used to listen to. I still, it still rings in my head. You know? I see. Yeah. I see. Great. You're still watching Talk or 10 Minutes on Ghana Web TV with me, Paula Amabruni. I'm seated with Small God. It's getting interesting, but when we come back from this break, we get talking. on that break I asked small god the veteran artist he would love to you know work with or partner with now your tattoos I cannot say I didn't take notice of it but I know tattoos got meanings yeah, everyone, yeah, everyone tells go for a this story. Are all, it's crazy it's crazy yeah. it's crazy like, it's the deep. stories are deep you want to read one there you go uh too weird to live too rare to die exactly you're rare like I'm gonna say so that's one let's leave it no, let's continue let's leave it there yeah. but then so, did you do it here in Ghana or? different different countries I, different I kind different. of put them as I go along so that okay. I tell the story all right great now back to telling stories I would love to ask you let's get a little bit personal yeah. uh do you still remember the name of your childhood sweetheart back wow. in the day childhood sweetheart did yeah. I have one 
You don't have one. Don't tell me you're the hard guy. Who never gave up? You don't have a sweetheart. I don't oh. think I had one in her. Like really? Chinese sweetheart. I don't think so. Maybe it was the, maybe the teacher or something. I don't know. I okay. never had one. But small girl, do you have a family? Of course I have a family. I'm a grown-ass man, dog. I, I know you mentioned of your son. You have a son. I have a partner. I mean, I have, I have two kids. This is this is a sad news for all those who are here in Small God. He said he's got a family, he got a partner and wonderful family, so, yeah, so I think this I is the end of the road for I you guys. You to be just sitting there. Oh, no, but you know with musicians, sometimes they say once you get there it's hard to pick a partner. No, no, no. You don't know what you're coming my in for. I've been with my partner for fifteen years. Wow. Wow. That's I, big. I've tried. That's big. You're doing great. Um I know you've had a lot of success when it comes to music, mm. but what would you consider as your biggest gig? The biggest gig? The biggest gig. Like, For just my... as it, in your career, in what you do. I think it also is just, if your first album is like your biggest one you could ever feel, mm. Mm. because you work, you work so hard on that one. It's the first yeah. one, so it's like the prototype. You're actually going through, you're going to go through your ups and downs, your no's and yes, it's, you're going to go through all this result. It's always your first baby. Okay. So that's, I think that that's now, it. Now, talk about comes with it. Yes. Yeah. One thing I observe is that your album is loaded. You've got Ghanaian artists, international, yeah, Nigerians. But, you work with a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, but what I represent, as I said to you, I represent Africa, not just Ghana per se. Mm. Africa and the diaspora, the world. So if I'm bringing Africa and the diaspora, I'm bringing them both. So I have to tap into every, every side of Africa. Mm -hmm. Let's say North, South, East, West, Central. So once I do that, then I know I've done what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. Then you go to the diaspora, then you tap into that side and also bring you home. Yeah. Now your debut album, Building Bridges. Building Bridges. And then the second one, Connecting, Connecting the Dots. Connecting yeah. yeah. What really went into it? They're like the selection, as you said, you like to work with Africans, it's like the whole thing. Yeah. But one would say, for an album that is solid, mm. like, there's no even no bad song on it. I, I, I personally listen to Building Bridges and Connecting the Dots, and I'm like, this is everything. It's like you tap into this journal, you tap into that. It's not like one way. That's what I say. When I'm making an album, I think of all, all scenarios, okay. all situations. Like as we're sitting here, if we want to play music, mm -hmm. I think about it. Okay, what kind of music can we put in the background that will not disturb this conversation? Then I'll make one like that. Okay, like you're driving, what kind of music? Would you listen to? Now find one that will fit that. So I'm catering for every every occasion. Mm -hmm. Where they cost they need the song. <laughs> they need one. Obige, Obige, Obige. Anya, it's a scenario in your back, man. Okay. You know what I'm saying? I know. Obu, Obu, Kali, Ope. Of course, I fucked up. I'm not sure. And then you're there. And you're there, but I'm not sure. So it's all scenarios. What must it? Obige, ah. So you have to plan for everything. So that's how I make an album. And I love your style. It's unique. The I know you say, okay, this is a small girl song. But mm. you know here, like his usually we we think, okay, this is you featuring maybe Tiwa Savage yeah. and Kwesi Arthur. Yeah. We expect that maybe you hear the person's voice. Yeah. But which which voice? This one. <laughs> <laughs> so how how did you create that style for yourself? Because so, I know feel like Master KJ, I know he does that. Yeah. So what happens mm -hmm. is like DJ Khaled, what does he do? He does the beat and like, you know, the, like the production. Okay, from, you sit in yeah. the producers, you create the beats and all that. Yeah. Then it directs what artist goes on there. Mm -hmm. So you're like executive producer. You do everything with, with them and you make it happen. It's your song, it's so fiction them. I didn't sing, but I was part of the creation. Yeah. I was part of the beat making. I was part of the writing. I was part of all these things. So yeah. Yeah, my, sometimes when I... It might not be your voice. Your voice But you there. DJ Khaled is dropping, but okay, you can hear him screaming. We're the best, but we're the best. I, I can't see you the best. So, yeah. But anyway, sometimes we get lucky and then we see your face flash in the music video. So I think that's in my own music video, maybe. No, you yeah. see me in Kwaku's video. Oh, okay. So it's 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 it's, it's intentional that you don't it's, appear it's not, in your. It's, it's not my shine. It's the artist supposed to shine, not me. That's the brain behind it. The artists are supposed. They're, they're singing. Mm. They're dancing. It's their shine. It's not. It's not for me to come and say, oh. I want to take the shine. It's not, no, it's, it's not. It's just for the artist. It's the artist. They're supposed to take the shine. It's their, it's their platform. I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. It's their artist. They enjoy it. Great. Now, if you pay attention to the names of your albums, Building Bridges, Connecting the Dots, it yeah. looks like it all tells a story. Yes, it's a story too. So, why that selection of name? 
purposely because I, I know maybe the well, next one will be in connection to as I, as I said to you mm -hmm. I, was, I was building bridge between Africa and the West. The West. So that's Building Bridges. The, the, the debut album. Yeah, that Great. was Building Bridges. Then I came back connecting the dots. Some of the dots wasn't connected when you're building a bridge. Because mm. some of them maybe on the screws now it's just a baby baby. So you have to come and tighten it. So that's connecting the dots. Mm. So the third one that's coming in October. Oh, okay. We have a new one coming. Yeah. October. Great. Bridging the Gap. Building bridges, connecting the dot, bridging the gap. Yeah, so it's all storytelling. Good. Storytelling. Yeah, so it, it all comes together. Together. Great, mm. great. Then, 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 if you don't know, let me just mention some of the artists that Small God has on his song. So he's got like African Giant. You got Tiwa Savage on the song, Tubaba, R2Bs. This uh, South African singer, I always get her name wrong, Bisua. 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 <laughs> yeah, she's crazy here, yeah. Bisua. I love her style. Bisusua. So you got her, you got UG, you got Harmonize, Samini, Quams yeah. and Flavor, uh, Asaka Boys too, I know you did a thing yeah, with them. Charlie. I, I F with them, man. They, they have Kweku DMC, mm. Okenet, I mean, yeah. YG. Yeah. He's hard. Those boys are yeah. hard, I Charlie. Mean, there are more of them, like. I can't pull them on the, there's Reggie, there's Reggie, J-Bad, Bad. there's all them, but you can't pull them on, on one song, so yeah, we, we pick them one by one as we go along, but we'll make it happen. We'll make it happen. Yeah, we'll make it happen. On the back of all you just said, you make it happen, would you say that in your own contributor, as in your contributing in your own quarter, have you been able to bridge the gap or there's more work to do, more well, hands more on work deck? To do. I mean, I can't do by myself this. There's, there's more to do, so I mean, I'm trying, I'm, I'm playing my part. And I'm just saying the rest of this. We need more of me. Let's cover, let's make it work, you know? Let's make it work, let's help each other. Yeah. Let's push this. Let's push Ghana. Let's forget individuality. Let's put Ghana first. Let's push Ghana. Great. I mean, I think that's the only way we can also rise and stand up and say, yeah, we're here. Because now at the moment we're just doing individuality like me, 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 me. Nah. You know, I feel like. We should put Ghana face. Great. Once we put Ghana face, I guess we'll, we'll rise. I believe. I strongly mm. believe that. But one of your songs that leaves rent free in my head is Giddy Giddy. Ooh. Yeah, Charlie. I don't know, maybe it's because Black is on it, that's what I'm being biased with that. Yeah. But then I know Big Ads, the Canadian rapper, and then our own, our very own Black Sharif. Mm. How did you get that collaboration together? Like, because that is a solid one. Well, I, the song was done a year before it came out. Oh. I know, I know, I know. We did it. We recorded the first, Black, me and Black did the first part. Okay. Then we kept it. Obviously, we had other songs that we dropped before that. Mm. But this one, when I'm, I was trying to look for the right person Perfect. to connect, collaborate with him, like to connect with him. So, I mean, we went around, we went around just trying to search the right person. Mm -hmm. Then a friend of mine called Drew in America was having a session and he goes, oh, my G, where's that song you played for me? Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, why? He goes, yeah, I have blah, blah, blah here. I'm like, oh, cool, let me talk. We just had a conversation, blah, blah, blah. We connected and I sent the song across. So he listens to it, he's like, he called me back FaceTime, screaming, yo, this is crazy, man. This, this, this idea, I like the idea. What, what's the meaning of what he's saying? I had to break it down. Not to the perfect, but he I got it. it as much as I can. So I didn't call Blacko and say, yo, can you break it down more for me? Because I speak cheap, but you know Blacko goes hard. Uh -huh. So we broke it down, I explained to him. He went in, yes. I mean, it's good to be Ghanaian. It's good. it's good to be African. It's good to be African. So everybody's trying to. So him hearing it and also trying to connect with, with his roots, it fits perfect. He listens to it, likes it. He goes in, that's the spot. Send me across and listen to it. And he goes, yeah. I like where I had face. He goes, no, I want to go in again. I'm like, wow. The guy wants to kill the song. Mm -hmm. he, we send it back to him. He goes in again. Came back. I played it to Blacko. Blacko goes, no. I want to go in as well. <laughs> so Blacko goes in again. Charlie. So it's like, I like the energy giddy, because giddy. everybody wanted to give their best. Okay. And they give their best. And I mean, that's why you also love it. That's why it's living rent never, free in my head. Get their best, it wouldn't, wouldn't have, have come up. Yeah, so. Now, the music vis uh, video for that, the visuals, is unique. It's something I have not seen. Yeah. And like you picture every. I spoke yeah. to some places in Ghana, and yeah. then how you wrote it, yeah. 
Uh, I did that. Gosh, like, it's a crazy idea. I love things which are different. Like, yeah, give me something that is I, different, I, something I, that will get I me talking. I thought about this for too long, but at the end, that's what we came with him. It's perfect. It was. It was. It was. I, I was scared to give it to the world because I, I thought they would be, they would judge. But who am I? Who am I? I mean, sometimes I don't, I don't give a f. So I said, you know, it is what it is. I'm going to give it to them. It's something new, something different. Let me start it. Maybe everybody will join, join the trail after. I'm sure. I'm, I'll be looking out for that. Yeah, so I'll be looking. so if mean, you haven't checked out the visuals for Giddy Giddy, do check it out. It's on YouTube. Because I don't want it to be just a normal visual. People are just reading, 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 uh -huh. reading. Because sometimes I do it. I just sometimes I lose concentration. I forget it. But if if you make it fun, yeah, they they waiting to see what's next. Charlie. And that's how to engage them on the. Great. So before we wrap up our conversation, I won't say I haven't taken notice of your style. I love your style. Thank you. Like it gives you a little bit of street, but then it's class. Like you know, what, what informs it? How you put it together? Daily paper stuff like that. I know you yeah, like the designer. Daily paper, daily paper. They're like my my, my people. Like mm. they're like my we are like family. They're my my friends. Okay. My boys. You know. So I mean. You know where they're based? They're based in Holland. Mm. They're doing their thing. One is Ghanaian, one is from Morocco. The other, the other one is, is, is from it's three boys that created the paper. Okay. And I'm, I'm always with them. They're doing their thing. I help when I can help. I said to you, let's go home. Let's go to Ghana. I mean, you're doing your thing. You're big there, but let's go home. So we spoke about this for about a year, two years, and we came home. So when we came, we did a collaboration. So we keep on doing, every year I do collaborations with them. Okay. So, I mean, as you always see me, I always wear, wear things from people I know. I try to promote it. Promote. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you wear the odd ones you don't know, but mostly what I wear, I wear, I promote my own people. I promote, like, that's what I'm very strong on, promoting our people. So that's I what see. I do. So tell me, I wear them a lot because they're my people. Okay. I mean, see me wearing free the youth. It's my, these are my kids. See me wearing, there's so many names, I can't even mention it. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Big Lomo. You see me wearing a lot of names, but they're all my people because. Why not? Do why I know the owner of Gucci? Come to think Does of he know it. me? Yeah. Can I talk to him? I can't. At least, why can't we talk to the people we know and support them to get them out there? And where, whatever I can do, I do. I it's play about my part. time. It's about time that our part. celebrities wear the things to promote. Of course, they do it, but you know we can always do more. Yeah, I mean everybody in their style. So, what's the most expensive fashion item that you own? Ooh. Something that you really spend millions on? Maybe Ooh. is it a watch, a shades, sneakers? I don't know. No, um, I mean, I spent a lot. I spent a lot. I got, I got a lot of crazy things, but <laughs> it's not here to come and start having that conversation. But I do spend a lot. Mm. I do. You like the finest things. Well, you work hard, so why don't you enjoy the finest things in life? That's what you're working for. Mm -hmm. What are you working for? To enjoy the finest things. Exactly. So <laughs> I have to play that part. I work hard. I mean, I work 48 hours a day. If there's 48, 48 hours a day, I work 48, 48 hours a day. I don't sleep. No break. Yeah, so I have to enjoy what I'm working for. Great. Mm. You find out words to your fans, you're all just supporting, you're mm. just doing the listening and stuff like that. That's what I always say, shut the fuck up, stop complaining, keep working. Just keep working, stop complaining. That's what happens, everybody just complain and don't want to work. They just, once you start complaining, you just make an excuse or just put yourself back. So I always say, just shut the fuck up, keep working and stop complaining. Because once you do that, you move forward. I mean, you call small God, he didn't answer. You don't see how many say, he never answers, so you're upset and you're waiting. Keep Just pushing. Just be quiet, Just keep pushing. I'll find you. <laughs> I like it's that. It's like me having a conversation with you. I'm sure if I never pushed, won't be having this conversation. Mm -hmm. You'll like, you like, you be, you be like, who is, who is small God? Actually, you won't, you won't start calling you, forget small God. Charlie, please not forget Smogo. Me and I wanted you. If you could ask some hey, people, Charlie. Because I, was <laughs> because I was making noise. Not because you're making noise, because of your works. Yeah, because of my work. That's why I say shut the fuck up. Keep working. Keep working. So your work speaks for yourself. Exactly. This is Soccer Tainment on Ghana Web TV. Thanks for doing the watching. I am Paula Amabruni. <laughs>
was dismissed as editor of the Daily Graphic mm -hmm. because I said something the government of that day didn't want. Welcome to the Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. This is the most informative social, political, and personality interview program you can find online. My name is Ismail Akwe. In this episode, we are going to tap into the life and brains of a Ghanaian legend. He is a journalist, a novelist, and so many other things around the media. He started writing in the 1950s, and he has since not stopped. Our guest will be introduced to you after this break. This is the lowdown. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back from the break. And we are in the company of a legendary writer. And our writer, I mean our guest, was born in 1935. And I'm sure a lot of our viewers are not in that age bracket where when he was born however there are others who would remember a lot of his works and may not know who he is and our guest is mr martin cameron dodu Hi. welcome sir thank you very much and i'm glad you are here because you contribute to ghana web and you still do how do you normally put together your thoughts when writing because you are 85 years old let me first of all correct you. I was born in 1937, oh. not 35. I know I'm old, but <laughs> not, not that old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So how do you go about your passion, which is uh, writing, journalism, and all of that, even at this age? Because a lot of your uh, mates, I would say, have retired. Yes. Well, uh, the thing is to never stop thinking about your country, your home, and the world. Then when you get ideas about what you are hearing or seeing, you tell yourself, would I do this? What can I say about that? Do I have anything to tell other people about? Would I like to converse with someone about this issue? Because the media is just a reflection of life. Mm -hmm. And in life, if you don't converse with people, if you don't exchange ideas, then you are basically dead on your feet. Mm -hmm. Now, the reason why I keep writing, and I write two columns a week, mm -hmm. one for the Daily Guide of Ghana, and the other for the Ghanaian Times. I taught myself how to write. I've never been to a secondary school. I've never been to a journalism school. I just, out of the love of communicating, began to read a lot, listen a lot, and made the world know something that I'm very familiar with. And I go on doing that because so long as God has given me this brain and it isn't dead yet, I have to use it. If you don't use it, it will die on you. And a lot of journalists retire from 50, some after 50, some even before 50. But uh, you were a freelance journalist and a writer from the 80s. Yes. And by then, were you supposed to have retired in the UK or you were uh, actively working alongside being a freelance journalist? Well, who tells you to retire? It's only your work. In journalism, nobody supervises what you do, especially if you're a freelance. So, so long as you write well, you remember events and you are not too lazy to check up on your facts you, you don't retire yeah. good journalists don't retire mm -hmm. when you want to retire it's probably after you have written your autobiography mm -hmm. and I am writing mine but there is so much going on that I haven't completed it and I don't think I'll complete it in the next few years unless I am called away 
I think you have to complete it. And anything we can do to get you to complete it, we're going to do it in our own way. But with uh, remembering and recounting uh, memories, yes, this is something you are really good at because uh, you remember the pre-independence era when you were still, I mean, actively uh, working and you were a young man then. How was it like when you were a people teacher? At that point, did you think you would be a journalist and you didn't even know what journalism was at the time? That is true. I was very lucky in that I was, I think, in Standard 6 when the Daily Graphic was launched. Now, the Daily Graphic has very interesting antecedents. It was launched by the Daily Mirror Group of London. Now, at that time, the Daily Mirror was the biggest newspaper in the world in terms of readership. And they employed very good journalists. Bankole Timothy was employed from Sierra Leone and became a very important person in the Ghana media. Henry Ofori, you probably have heard of him. He used to be editor of Drum. Moses Dankwa, Kofi Badu, the uh, sports writer. They were very good. And these people were taught by Fleet Street experts. And when you read them, you felt, oh, I'd like to write like that. And so even when I was in middle school, I was writing good essays and I was lucky to have some very good teachers who helped me along and taught me that first of all you must master the English language and secondly you must read so that you know what interests you and learn from that to make your stuff interesting to other people. Where did you get your materials to read? Were you, were you reading newspapers at the time? Yes, or newspapers. And also, yes. <laughs> I come from Esiakwa, which is near Chibi. Mm -hmm. And Chibi had a, li a library at the community center. I used to go there every week, you know, paying out of uh, people teacher salary about seven pounds a month. I was taking uh, lorries at mm -hmm. one shilling a time, go to Chibi, borrow a book, bring it back to Siakwa, read it. As soon as I finish, I go and change it and so on. And what kind of books were in the library at the time? All sorts of novels. Mm -hmm. I read uh, The Saint. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of novels about The Saint, for instance, mm -hmm. and then Black Shirt. <laughs> if you knew how these people wrote, you know, if you borrowed a book, you mm -hmm. needed to finish reading it. Yeah. You couldn't put it down. Mm -hmm. It had that knack of making you interested in the story they were telling you. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Charles Dickens and other people. I read a lot. Mm -hmm. and, and you wrote a lot from that inspiration? Yes. Uh, not directly. This okay. is the thing about education. Mm -hmm. When you absorb and you are disgorging, it's not conscious. The English language appeals to you. You find an expression as you are reading and it gets into your subconscious. And before you know it, you are applying it to your own situation and perhaps modifying it a bit. Because these people were writing about Europe and America and I was in the Gold Coast. But I had to make sure that people in the Gold Coast understood what I was writing, so I adapted, yes. Then in 1957, you were at GBC by yes. then. How was it like, if you can take us back, for you and also your thoughts at the time when uh, we had the independence, what was going on then? Whilst I was in school, there was this struggle between the National Liberation Movement and the Convention People's Party about which party would lead Ghana to independence. And then I joined a magazine called New Nation. But whilst I was at New Nation, I was moonlighting by writing short stories for the Ghana Broadcasting Corporation. And they employed me because they liked what I was writing. Yeah. So I was there when independence occurred. We were, uh, we had a, a head of news who was from the BBC, seconded mm -hmm. from the BBC. Mm -hmm. We had a head of programs who was seconded from the BBC. And we had a director general who was seconded from the BBC. And they were looking at talent for talent, you know, okay. all the time. So I wrote for them and they employed me. Yeah. And without any training, I couldn't write shorthand, I couldn't type, yeah. touch typing and so on. Just out of 
being able to remember things. I was made a reporter. Mm -hmm. Now, in those days, the radio was the most authoritative media in the country. So, if you made a mistake, if you, if you misquoted someone or gave an untrue fact, they would be on you in a minute. And you lose your job. Absolutely. Well, mm -hmm. and it was so disgraceful. Mm -hmm. So you had to be very, very careful. And that was how I trained myself to be able to report accurately, reflect what people were really saying. And I was sent to Parliament as a parliamentary reporter. The oh. worst thing you can think of, because mm -hmm. as you know, politicians are very interested in being yes. quoted accurately. Mm -hmm. Because if you quote them and make an error, it goes to their constituents and yes. they, they will not be elected again. Yeah. So they were very, very interested in making sure that we reported them properly. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, mm. who was then the Prime Minister of Ghana, once telephoned the newsroom of Radio Ghana once I was there. Mm. And he told us that we had said that the dam was being built at Konsombo. It wasn't Kosombo, it was Akosombo, <laughs> A-K-O-S-O-M-B-O. And he spelled it for us. Oh. So just imagine this mm. happening and everybody know. He said, hey, Prime Minister listens to us. We must be accurate too. Mm. And because I managed to uh, report accurately, I was sent to all the important assignments. Yes. And, uh, Have you ever interviewed uh, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah at the time? Not for writing, but I've had one-to-one -one with him okay. during the Congo crisis. Mm -hmm. I was editor on duty yeah. when President Lumumba, Prime Minister Lumumba of the Congo, mm -hmm. uh, had problems. And we had, at that time, a monitoring service which mm -hmm. was uh, capable of picking up radio transmissions from all of Africa. Mm -hmm. And I heard that the Ghana ambassador in the Congo had been expelled by the government of the Congo. At that time, Ghana had sent soldiers, artisans, and a whole lot of people to the Congo. So I realized that if we broadcast that news, people would panic. They, hey, if we have no embassy in the Congo and our people are there, what will happen to them if anything occurs? Yeah. So I said, I'll send this news to the Prime Minister. And out of my own initiative. Mm -hmm. I sent it to his office at Flagstaff House. Mm -hmm. And within 30 minutes, they sent a car for me. And I went there and he sat me down and said, why did you bring this news here? And I said, I know that we have soldiers in the Congo and you have an embassy. But we, according to your instructions, have set up a monetary service so we can hear Radio Leopoldville direct. Mm -hmm. And this news came from Radio and I thought that perhaps it would take time to get to you through the army or through the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. But here it is. Mm -hmm. Give it to the president and let him do what he likes with it. So that's why I wrote it to you because if I had broadcast it, I'm sure we would have had panic in the country. And he said to me something very strange, but <laughs> I think he was completely bowled over. Mm. He said, don't send such news here. <laughs> this is not a news agency. Mm. Can you imagine? The because he wanted you to broadcast it. No, no, no. No. He just said, I shouldn't send it here because he was disturbed. <laughs> yes, yes. And then he, I went with somebody working in Radio Gala who was close to him. And he picked up a letter and said, listen to what our ambassador has written. So the ambassador who was Andy Welbeck had written that he had the Congo in his pocket, people come to him for advice and so on. Very rosy picture. Mm. I didn't say anything. He read it and I went my way. Within two weeks, Congolese soldiers had gone to the embassy to expel the ambassador by force because he said he wasn't going to leave. Oh. He had to hide in a freezer oh. and then eventually he was freed by the Ghana army, by the commander of the army himself. He was called Alexander, General Alexander.
Mm. He was there with him. He, Alexander, went to the embassy, picked him up from the freezer, mm. and drove him to the Poville airport and put him on a plane. Oh. And looked at the said, yeah, <laughs> this is not a news agency. <laughs> yes. So if they had worked on it, probably that wouldn't have happened and it could have prevented uh, uh, maybe some damage. wasn't my business. Yes. My business was to make sure that my fellow countrymen in the Congo were safe. Yeah. And yeah. you send them there, mm. they are facing problems. You have to know. Mm. <laughs> but of course, as I say, this is what I mean by using your intelligence. Mm -hmm. You go and broadcast it, everybody will hear about it. And your brother is a carpenter who has been sent to the Congo to help them. His brother is an electrician. His brother is in the armed army. What would they think? Yeah. So, I, you know, you use your judgment in journalism. That's why I say that there are a lot of people in this country who think that if you get a microphone, that's the end of the story. Mm. It isn't. You must think about the person who is going to listen to you. You must think about the person whom you are going to talk about. What would they say if they were face to face with you? Just because you can broadcast on the airwaves and reach them directly, it doesn't mean that you should forget that they are also human beings like yourselves so yeah. who have rights to their good name and so on and so forth. But if you are not trained, you think, oh, it doesn't matter, let me make people say that. Did you hear so and so say this? Did you hear so and so say this? That's not journalism. This is quite an interesting story and also quite an expose on the responsibilities of journalists. And we'll be going deeper into those days and how you handled certain situations that came your way and also the differences in the media in Ghana and then the UK where you lived some part of your life. Yes. This is the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Ismail Akwe. We'll be right back and continue the discussion with Martin Cameron Dodi. back from the break this is the lowdown on Ghana web tv my name is ismail akwe and we are discussing with our guest martin cameron dodu and i don't know do you uh are you comfortable with the name martin because you normally uh sign cameron dodu and no martin yes uh, <coughs> because of my uh, affinity with the radio i like mm -hmm. you funny i mm -hmm. like Good words, and I loved the, the uh, name Cameron rather more than Martin. Okay, and of course, uh, editors prefer that you use as few words as possible <laughs> in, for your story as well as your byline. Mm. So rather than say Martin Cameron, do, do I just yeah. choose the Cameron? And it's important to me because my father was a cocoa buyer, and the firm that he worked for was from the United Kingdom and the head of the firm was a Scotsman called Cameron and he helped my father a lot. My father was an incredible man. He never went to school but he could buy cocoa and account for it. Mm -hmm. He brought 60 pounds of cocoa. He would know if it was more or not. He knew the scales yeah. and so on and so forth. And these people appreciated him and promoted him. Mm. And we had quite a nice life. Yeah. So I said, oh, if it hadn't been for Mr. Cameron, maybe I wouldn't be enjoying this life. So you're living the life of Mr. or the legacy of Mr. Cameron? Because yes. at least he made your family comfortable. Absolutely. That's quite interesting. And uh, in the 1960, I think in 1960, you were the editor for Drum Magazine. Yes. At what point did you leave GBC? <laughs> it was very interesting. Mm. I was making rapid progress there. Mm. I went there in 1956, and by 1960, I had been promoted to editor. Uh, in those days, mm. if you become, became an editor, you had a car, mm. a car loan, had a bungalow and all sorts of things. So I was moving fast. 
when Henry Foley, I have mentioned it, yes. came to interview me at GBC about the stories I was writing, which were being broadcast not by the news section, but by the program, programs section. And uh, he asked me, why is it that we have so few writers in Ghana? And I gave him an answer, I said, look, this is a humid climate. People go to their offices and work. Those educated who have offices, when they get home, they are very tired. And writing is a tiring occupation. Not only that, but <laughs> they hardly pay anything. Yes. Which incidentally, Ghana Web has been perpetuating. <laughs> you use a lot of stuff which you don't pay for. Mm -hmm. How do you expect your freelancers to exist and continue pro produce, producing stuff for you? Mm -hmm. When I became editor of Daily Graphic, my, the drop, I paid well. I fought for contributors' fees because without them, what are you? Okay, you may be bright, you may be a very good writer, but you need the input of other people because they are different people. Yeah. They have different experiences. They are all over the place and you are sitting in your office. And the person brings you a story which you put in a magazine and sell. If you saw those days, at the end of the month, you see about 10 kids on this road here. Mm. African drop, African drop, African drop, and people used to like to buy the drop. So if they are buying and paying for it, why wouldn't you share it with those who help you mm. to make it popular? Yes. We have to be absolutely true, truthful to one another. Yeah. I regard Ghana Web as my second home. Mm. I used to write even for Say It Loud. Wow. <laughs> Yes, I took part in some of those oh. very serious controversial debates. I hope you didn't go anonymously. I think I didn't use my name. Okay. <laughs> because some of the stuff there yes. is, you know, it's almost disgraceful to be associated with. Yes. But we've turned it down now. Yeah. That's very good. Mm -hmm. But you've done very well. There's nobody I know of importance in politics or business who doesn't use Ghana Web every now and then yes. and also i like the idea that you encourage people to express their opinions about what they read mm. some other uh, media also use opinions but they don't encourage yeah. letter writing yeah and so please mm. keep up mm. and encourage people don't just wait if there is um an issue that you want people to talk about, find someone who is competent mm. on that issue and go to the person and let the person, invite the person, be flattered that yeah. you have come to him. Mm. Then after he has given his opinion, you can generate a discussion of it. The country needs discussion because things are moving very fast and things are difficult. That's There's flesh in all over the world, there is hunger here and there. And in this country, yeah. we are sitting on one of the worst man-made disasters we can think of, which is Galamse. Yeah. That the people of this country, with all their culture and knowledge, will turn River and Cobra into a chocolate-faced river. Brim, where I was reared in Achimabakwa, you can't drink it. Last weekend I was at Esegua. We used to have Supon, Trafo and Brim Bus -bus -so. yeah. They now take water from the ground. And even that is not good enough. And so people are so we're drinking sachet water. You know? And the media is not doing uh, that much. Let's compare it to the past when you were the editor of uh, Daily Graphic. Was it the same situation then? Uh, were, were, were the reportage uh, mostly about politics or they were a bit different? I wish you were doing this at my house because I would show you an article I did. Mm -hmm. There was a small village called Insitem. It lies between uh, two, ri two rivers, mm -hmm. Brim on this side and Supong on that side. And both rivers 
flooded at the same time and the people's houses were in underwater. And I heard about it, so I sent a chap to go and report it. We put it on the front page. The Minister of Rural Development took a helicopter to that place to see for himself and he got in touch with his uh, housing people and they built a new township for Sudan. That wow. new township you see there as you are going to Kumase mm. before you reach Usima was built as a result of the daily graphics efforts. Mm. We, uh, we did all manner of things. As I say, we, I don't have the evidence here. So. But the point is, what is important? To discuss the family affairs of somebody, whether he's having an adulterous relationship with some woman or other. Or, is that important? Yeah. You are sitting here, your children, and their children are going to have to import water if you are not careful because given uh, climate change also the what we are doing to the rivers will worse yeah and as you say you pick up the newspaper and it's as if nothing is happening in the world yeah. i can't believe it and there are people here who call themselves journalists they actually formed a journalist uh, of concern about Galamsey. Yeah. I don't know why they formed it, I wasn't here. But whatever they formed it for, when it, they achieved it, they, it's gone. Nobody's doing anything about it any longer. And yet, mm. if you go to Brim today, if you go to Ancobra today, if you go to Tano, they are all still being polluted by the Galamsey people. With the kind of journalism we are practicing now, uh, I have heard from a number of journalists who are saying, well, why do you complain about the kind of content that we have? Because we need to sell. And if you look at the UK and other places like the US, we have a lot of the media focusing on the personal lives of people and following people about to talk about the adulterous issues and those things because they sell. Do you uh, think we should be at that level at this time? No, the point is, we are lying. If you put on the television on CNN right now, you find fire in uh, California. There is fire also and floods in Kentucky. Here am I sitting <laughs> in Accra. I know all about it. Why? Because that is the media. They see life in danger and they deploy resources to cover it. They interview the people should be alleviating the pain of those mm. who are suffering and so on and so forth. So they are just lying that it's because of uh, lack of interest that uh, they are not covering this story. It's not true. People know that they must drink water. <laughs> we have a proverb which shows that even animals appreciate water. Say, Akokodnu or the chain, I mean. mm. when a chicken dips its beak in water and gets water to drink, it raises its head up and says thank you to God. Water is the most important thing in life. Yeah. You know, you can uh, starve yourself for maybe a week. You would die. There are people who starve themselves for weeks and months. Mm. But starve yourself for water for even 48 hours and see what will happen to you. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely incontestable that what we are doing to ourselves in this country is shamelessly stupid. And uh, what annoys me most is that they allow Chinese people to bring excavators and chamfer machines to turn our rivers upside down. But go to China, mm -hmm. go and see the Yangtze River, go and see other, the Yellow River and so on. You dare not pollute it. They will shoot you. Mm. You know. But here we are. Important political personalities boast of making one million dollars a day from Galamse. If he had said that in China, he wouldn't be alive today. What percentage of blame would you give the media? And what role can the media play in this kind of uh, situation? The media is supposed to be impartial. Mm -hmm. 
politicians are worried that if they clamp down on Galamse, the people will not vote for them. Fair enough. But the media have to remind them that your vote is important. People voting for you is important. But what will happen if they have no water to drink? For your own sake, in your own interest, you have to pay attention to this issue. Because you imagine that a person walking along the street, say your housework, is buying water sachet for 40 pesos each. Today he will buy, tomorrow he will buy. Next week, where will he get the money? Mm -hmm. And what water are you using to wash their clothing, to bath, and so on and so forth? So the whole idea is just too ridiculous for what people are embarrassed that they are being told they are so stupid. As a result, they invent these uh, superior arguments that, oh, if we put in only galaxy, people will not buy our media. Mm -hmm. Politicians will be angry with us as well. The media has to assess the situation. See, we cannot allow this. The flooding in Ghana, we make a lot of noise about it. It is now going down a bit. You have to, people, a minister will go to his office and find about 400 people waiting for him. They want jobs, they want this, they want that. So by the time he gets home, he's not thinking about it, I'm saying, if he's thirsty, they bring him water from the fridge. He doesn't know. But we know. And if we don't know, we must find out. Mm. So, with the level of uh, disinterest, if I can call it that. Absolutely. Amongst, from the media, and even the general public in these important aspects of uh, the society, do you think there is a brighter future as compared to the past because you've also seen a different level of issues and problems in the past from the 60s through the 70s 80s and the issues of today with all our digital uh, improvements and the transformation and we see the problems uh, deepening is, is, is there any uh, difference that you expect there can be a difference if the journalists wake up because when they wake up, they wake others up. So the first uh, point of course is journalists? Yes. Okay. You probably have heard that Thomas Jefferson said that given freedom of the press and no government, I would prefer to have freedom of the press and no government. Mm. It's as high as that because if you don't know about the issues, how are you going to vote for someone? And if you don't vote for someone, who is going to govern? So it is important that the journalists wake up. And if the politicians don't allow themselves to wake up, you kick them in the butt so that they will wake up. But the journalists own, the politicians own a lot of the media houses. That is true. Mm. I was dismissed as editor of the Daily Graphic. Mm -hmm. Because I said something the government of that day didn't want. Do you remember what you said? Yeah, 1970. Mm. Uh, Professor Busia, the Prime Minister, wanted Ghana to engage in dialogue with South Africa. Mm. Apartheid, you know, yeah. where a man's skin determines his fate in life. And I said, no, we can't do this. We have to help the blacks in South Africa to overthrow the whites so that they will all become equal. Mm. And I published this and I ran a campaign in the government-owned newspaper wow. because I believed that the government was holding the papers in trust for the people. Mm. So the people's interest was that. And I did other things like what I told you about the water. Yes. And I was dismissed. I knew I might be dismissed. But who am I mm. compared to 30 million black Africans in South Africa? Their interest. So you knew you would lose your job for yes. doing that? And your subordinates agreed and then they implemented uh, the campaign. Oh, well, as an editor, I write an editor editorial, how can you mm. not publish it? Mm. No, I did it. But the important thing is, is that the journalist of intelligence doesn't put himself above the people. Yeah. Even now, that was 1970. 70. 
How many years now? F fifty. That's 50? about yeah, over forty years. People still remember what I wrote and what I did, mm -hmm. and it's there for the records so that people can see that you don't say mm -hmm. that person owns this medium, and therefore I can't use it to say what I think. If mm -hmm. you couldn't think, he wouldn't have employed you. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And if he implies you and he doesn't respect your intellect, then what's, who is he? Mm. You have to be challenging these ideas all the time. Definitely be respectful, explain yourself, and let people know why you did or you are doing certain things. Mm. But to say that, oh, my boss would like this, so I wouldn't use it. When you know that it's in the interest of the people, it's a different matter altogether. So you resigned from GBC, you uh, went, went to, to drum. drum. Yes. You resigned from drum, Yes. went to graphic, and you were fired from graphic. Yes. We'll continue the story after this break. We are speaking with uh, Cameron Dodu, is a legendary journalist, writer, novelist, and everything you can think of in the media, a broadcaster as well. My name is Ismail Akwe. This is The Lowdown on Ghana Web TV. We'll be right back. From the break, this is the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Ismail Okwe. Our guest is Cameron Dodu, and we spoke about how you were fired from Daily Graphic. Were you hurt by it? Oh yes, I mean editor of the largest paper in the country, mm. and also my argument was quite simple. All I said was, Mr. Prime Minister, in South Africa itself. The media are reporting that the African countries which are on the side of the white minority regime are being paid money. Ufwe Bwanyi in the Ivory Coast and you are his friend. And so people will put two and two together and say that maybe they are giving you money. Hmm. Malawi is opening an embassy there. We know that Dr. Banda has got money from them or he intends to get money from them. So don't do that. Ghana has a name which the black South Africans respect because we used to train some of their guerrilla warfare mm -hmm. people. Now, if they hear that Ghana is engaged in dialogue with the white minority regime, they will be hurt. And even those who want to fight and die for their country will be detailed, say, oh, we have no hope. Mm -hmm. So please don't do it. And you fire me for that. Thank God for it. Mm. I have that history. Yeah. And uh, Nelson Mandela was eventually released from prison. I went to the uh, inauguration when he became president. Oh. Yeah. I saw my mm. work bearing fruit. Mm. You know, and that is important. Yeah. It so what, was one of the yeah. proudest moments of my life. So what happened uh, right after graphic? What did you do next? Well. Was I was at, before I even joined the graphic, I was correspondent for the Financial Times of London mm. and also for the Fox Grant in Amsterdam and other people. Yeah. Uh, so I never ever felt that I should fear. Mm. If you fire me from the Daily Graphic, I have the uh, Financial Times and eventually I even moved from there to the Sunday Times, a very rich newspaper, and then from Sunday Times to The Guardian, mm. and so on. So I have faith in myself that my talent can be appreciated by other people. And can you imagine? Here my Ghanaian, no degrees or anything, and my byline appears in The London Times, The London Sunday Times, The London Observer, The Fox Friends Amsterdam, Hans Verreld and others. And all of them were getting different stories. Absolutely. Not the same story across uh, the, 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 well, the papers. That would be <laughs> stupid because <laughs> yes. they read. Yes. They read on another. Hmm. So I managed. And they paid as well. 
very well and mm. the big expenses mm. for instance i was sent to gambia by the sunday times i was sent to liberia to cover those school uh, and other places yeah. uh, they didn't know what stories are mm. and all they want is a good story mm. and thank god i had the preparation for that you know mm. gbc mm. and other drama so on taught me how to write so at what point did you uh, decide to live in london is that where you left london that was in 1983 okay I reported the murder of the judges, three judges and a retired yes. army officer, for Focus on Africa on the BBC. Mm. They were suppressing the news as it came out of the special, uh, not tribunal, special commission that was investigating the murders under Justice Azukra. At the time you were in Accra? Yes. Yes. Now, because the on the daily graphic, they were, mm. the daily graphic wasn't publishing what was going on. Yes. Ghanaian Times, Duca. But by three, four, five o'clock, I was on the BBC reporting on it for Focus on Africa. Mm -hmm. And I was called. I was called by someone and told, uh, be very careful. Otherwise, mm -hmm. we shall even prevent you from sending stories because we control the external mm. uh, telephone service and the telex yeah and i got other hints one day i was having a pee in a public place near a restaurant somebody came there i don't know who he was he just looked at me and said camera are you still in this country mm. before i could say anything he gone who was he? What had he had? And I knew that in those days you could just vanish. Yeah. Not only that, but during that time, my son was driving my car and he had a mysterious accident at the crossroads. In Accra? In Accra. The car was a write off. It's very lucky that he wasn't hurt. Mm. But if they were picking on my family, so I've been through it, mm. but Allah is there looking after me and I've done my little bit. So at what point did you decide to move to London and did the BBC support you in moving? No, no. I was a freelance, you don't have okay. a contract. Yeah. I just went, turned up there and then I began to write for, you see my uh, freelance outlets. Did you move with your family? Eventually they joined me. Okay. But I spent 34 years abroad. 34 years? Of, yes. 34 years. And I regret it because if I had been here, maybe I could have made a lot of difference. Yes. But anyway, I was writing about Ghana anyway for overseas newspapers and media. Mm. And some Ghanaians were exposed to my ideas. Yeah. So the whole 34 years was for the fear of your life because it could, you could be attacked. I was. Where? Mm. You have an accident, your car is written off. Mm. There were times, one day I was going to Tema, and I was followed all the way to Tema and all the way back. But I wanted to see what they were doing. So they were laying the motorway extension, spin text rules and so forth. And I used to ride horses around that area, so I knew where the paths were. So, on the motorway, I just moved straight. And I went straight to the castle mm. under the regime of flight left and On a horse? No, no, no. Okay. After, <laughs> yes. I, I, I drove and they couldn't find me. Yeah. I was with someone important there discussing this issue when the person who had lost me came to report to him that he had lost me. <laughs> then he saw my face, I swear. He broke into hysterical laughter. Wow. He just couldn't control himself. Mm. Yeah. You think you can get me? I'm sitting here with your boss. Let him kill me today. Oh. And nobody can do anything to you if you mm. haven't done any, you haven't made any mistake. So the threats I were glaring. I didn't invent anything from the 
yeah. uh, story about the judges. I wrote what was said by the witnesses mm. and the judges and so on. You should kill me for that. What have you done? The record is still there. Wow. The threats were very glaring and you ran for your life. However, you came back. Yes. So at what point did you return? When did you return for, uh, permanently to Ghana? 2016-17. Okay. Yes. And what informed your return at that time? Oh, I was getting old. Mm. My children were being completely estranged from Ghana. Mm. They were all educated abroad, no, most of them. And also, uh, the atmosphere was good. Mm. I wanted to come back earlier, but you know, preparation is yes. important. At my age, you don't go and hang around on somebody's, uh, you know, premises and so yes. on. So I took my time, prepared, and I came back. Mm. That's why I've been able to continue to Ghana work. Yes, yes. And are you happy right now? Yes. No. Mm. Because of this Galamse situation, I'm not happy. No. I, I would be lying if I said I was. Look, we have a country in which the president said, I would rather lay down my office than allow Galamse to continue. But his powers are limited. Some people in his own party are boasting that they can make a million dollars a day from Galamse. If you read the Daily Guide, there was a column by somebody called Bauer recently, and he will explain to you how the NPP uh, national elections took place and what happened there. This is in black and white. Mm. We cannot continue this thing. The rivers are crying. The people are crying. There are so many diseases we don't hear about, mm. you know, because of the way that chemicals are transmitted through the water to our people. Mm. That was a major story. I think you published it, but I can't remember. Saying that there were babies being born without eyes and noses. You live in this country, you are a journalist, and you see a thing like that and you let it go. You don't discuss, you don't write editorial about it, nothing. Mm. What kind of people are we? What kind of journalists do we have? God is not coming from up there to save us from our own stupidity about the way that we use our water. He gave us the water, and that was enough. And in some countries, they look after the water. So I sit here and I look and say, after all that we have done, boosting in the foreign media that Ghana is a great country, this and that, and we ruin our own water, the water would. How can you be proud of yourself? Have you met the president already? Yes. And you spoke to him about some of these things? Yes. But I'm sure you didn't get any yeah. Well, he did his bit, but the mm. point is, as I said, the president said it publicly to everybody. Yeah. His party people know that he has said it, and that is his policy. They increase uh, the penalty for galamseas a lot. Mm. And they are still doing it. Because he cannot control all of them in the regions, in the districts, and in the villages. Mm. So that is why he needs help. He needs our help yeah. of working those people. The people who go to Ghana Web every day, they must get a message that something is very, very wrong in Ghana. Yeah. Now let's talk about family. Uh, how many children do you have? I have Thank God, six children. Six children. Yes. Yes. And Two girls mm -hmm. and four boys. And you are well educated and yes. everything. Yes. And uh, do you have a wife currently? I used to, but unfortunately, my wife passed away. Oh, okay. Okay. So I am married and need to have mm. a nice young sister or a nice young girl somewhere. And you want to introduce? <laughs> I'll be very grateful. <laughs> That's quite interesting. <laughs> 
<laughs> so now let's talk about the autobiography. I'm sure uh, we would have read a whole lot if it was completed. And uh, you are saying uh, it would take some years. Why would it take some years? Where have you reached? I want it to be my last testament. Yes. And so it needs time. And I want it to be very, very good. Mm. You know my standards. Uh, yes. I want to write a fantastic book. So is it about style or context? All. All of it. Yes. I want to mm. leave Ghana a very good book mm. starting from way back. Yeah. So what's, what's and also to inspire the young yeah. people, because as I've told you, I didn't go to secondary school. Yes, I've told you I didn't go to journalism school, mm. and my standards has reached overseas, not yes. only Ghana. Mm. So it means it can be done. Yeah, and those kids and young people who are saying that oh I don't have money this and that, mm. it's not an excuse. Mm. I passed my GCEO levels through private study at home with a candle. There was no electricity. Mm -hmm. And I passed GCEO level in 15 months. So my mates who were in secondary school were still in secondary school when I passed my GCE. Yeah. Then I got the job and gradually, uh, God helped me, it went well. Mm -hmm. So people can pick themselves up. That's quite uh, some great words. Uh, before we leave, I just want to ask you one thing. Who is your favorite writer? It's very difficult, but mm. since you, did you say you read philosophy? Psychology. Psychology. Yes. Have you heard of Bertrand Russell? Yes, I have. Yeah, he, he's mm. one of my favorite writers. He's mm. very, very good. Okay, who do you admire a lot in, uh, I mean, in the African writers that we have? I know you did something with Ole Soinka. Yes, and also Chinua Achebe. Chinua Achebe, yes. And Ayikweyama, don't mm. forget. Yes. yes. Those are all very, very mm. good writers. Mm. But you can't say you have a favorite. Well, it really doesn't make sense. Yeah. Because Ole Soinka writes plays. Mm. Uh, Chinua Achebe writes novels. Ayikweyama writes novels. Which genre am I going to pick my favorite from? Yes. But I like all of them and I like good writing. Before we leave, I must tell you this. Adjoa Yebua Ferry, mm. who is the columnist yes. for the Daily Graphic, has just published a novella. Mm. Very, very small. It's only about 60 pages. But it is fabulous. And I'm sure that she will continue and write a bigger book mm -hmm. but I read everything I can get everything and I yeah yeah that's that's a great advice and we are very grateful that uh, you honored our invitation to have a discussion with us on your life and also to share uh, your own ideas and some advice on how to go about journalism in general and also how the country should be headed because you write and we, 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 would go, we would have a discussion about get, giving you a very special place on Ghana Web so that you could contribute more and help in solving the country's situation. This is the lowdown on Ghana Web TV and my name is Ismail Okwe. Before we leave, uh, we have a citation for Mr. Cameron Dodu and this citation is from the Ghana Web Excellence Awards which was held last year. Ghanaians said, they like uh, Cameron Dodu. They follow his writing, and he writes for almost every platform you can think of. You don't use a typewriter, or you've used it before. A Y B Y. Ah, like that. Yeah. <laughs> you used to do A Y B Y, oh, or you've yes, improved. Yeah. Well, I can write fast, but yes. that's only because I've been doing the same thing for a long time. Yes. But I have about five laptops. <laughs> five laptops. <laughs> <laughs> and do you use a smartphone? Yes, indeed. You do. You yeah. do. Oh, okay. That means you, you are abreast uh, of the current trends. And uh, <laughs> well, you probably don't see too much of what I do for Ghana Web, but mm. I often tell them, please uh, accept this correction. Yes. For what I do. I'm yes. always critical of myself. Mm. I'm trying to know. How many times do you edit your, your, your stories? Uh, it depends on the mood. And the time, if I'm fatigued, I may make mistakes. And one thing that I hope uh, I can tell you for Ghana website, 
is that it is employed good proofreading. Yes. So even the best writers make mistakes because of deadlines and things of that sort. And you see that when you are rereading what you have said, there are mistakes in it which escaped you at first. And they haven't spotted it. Mm. That's so please, true. if my visit to you today can mm. encourage you to employ very good proofreaders, yes. I'll be very happy. And I, I know that I'll come home. That's, that's really true, and I think your advice is uh, well noted, and we're going to implement them okay. at Ghana Web, because we serve the nation in our own small way, or big way, as others who are online say, they say we are the biggest, so we have uh, more responsibility than other people, and that's why we are not coerced by any uh, force or any authority. However, importance should be placed on quality and also on uh, responsibility which is something we'll do. So this is uh, a citation for you, and it comes with a photograph. I mean, it's a, it's a digital painting. And I don't know if you'd agree whether it looks like you or not. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just take this off. OK. So this is it. It's a citation with an image there. I don't know if that's you when you were younger. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much to you. Um, very okay, so let me show this. this to the camera. Okay. So it says, uh, citation in honor of Cameron Dodu, in grateful recognition for your outstanding contribution to journalism and media freedom. You are an embodiment of excellence. Ghana Web appreciates you for your service to Ghana. You will forever remain in our good books. So this is from the Ghana Web Excellence Awards organizers and also from Ghana Web to you. And we thank you very much uh, thank for you. your service. Thank you very much. I feel very much at home. Yeah. Intellectually, I've been with Ghana Web for a long for time. For a long time, yes. Almost since you yes. began. Yes. So this is extremely well appreciated. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. So this is the end of uh, our show today. This is the lowdown on Ghana Web TV. My name is Ismail Akwe. Be safe. trying to eliminate electronic waste from our environment. Mm -hmm. Eliminating it has a lot to go through before we can achieve what we want. So we decided to focus on a point where we are turning the waste into. Mm -hmm. That's when we come with the power storage systems. And many thanks for joining us on today's edition of Best Tech on Ghana Web TV. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. Many people are coming up with innovative ways to ensure that the environment in which we live in is safe and devoid of plastic wastes. One of such people is Robert Inso, who is using recycled waste to build battery packs for power supplies for households and communities. My colleague, Maoli Aholumega, has the full report. Hello lovely people and welcome to yet another edition of Best Tech on Ghana Web TV. Today my guest is a young man who has been able to build a battery pack that provides 24-7 
power to both laptops and televisions. Before I introduce my guest, I'll take a quick break and we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back from that break on BizTech. My guest is Robert Insor, and he's the Chief Executive Officer for eCycle. Robert, welcome to BizTech. How are you? Oh, I'm cool. How are you? Great. Yeah. yeah good. Many thanks. You've left all the way Kumasi to Accra yeah. for us to do this. Many thanks. Oh. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you. Yeah, so you're the CEO of eCycle. What exactly is eCycle and what do you guys do? I see. Okay, uh, the name eCycle comes from uh, electronic waste recycling. Mm. So. What eCycle does is that we are trying to eliminate electronic waste from our environment. Mm -hmm. Eliminating it has a lot to go through before we can achieve what we want. So we decided to focus on a point where we are turning the waste into. Mm -hmm. That's when we come with the power storage systems. Mm -hmm. We have the necklace and other stuff. But the most important product from our recycling is the power storage system. Okay. So we are able to turn electronic waste into power banks for TV, for laptop, for light, and to serve the purpose of individual users institutions, farmers, like poultry farmers, for example, mm. they are currently our top market because okay. they need our power system mm. for their farms. So this cycle is up to just providing power, trying to eliminate the waste in other ways, which is the secondary, but the primary is the power system okay. with the solar. That's very interesting. You mentioned something about recycle. So are you using like plastics, plastic recycle? What are the kind of raw materials you guys use to build the stuff that you build? Okay, when it comes to the power side, we're using only electronic components. Okay. Like the capacitors, resistors, the laptop batteries, which is our major component from the waste that is actually valuable. Mm. Laptop batteries, for example, when it goes off, we tr discard it. But mm. when you take a laptop battery, actually, it doesn't just go off. There's something that is wrong in the pack. Mm. And there are cells. So never, it never gets spoiled. It gets spoiled, but mm. if it's at fault, that means there's something wrong. Okay. And the whole pack cannot be dead. Oh, okay. There are cells inside. Some are having six or four. Mm. So if it is faulty, it could be that one of the cells is failing. Mm. That means the rest is still working. So we take the rest of it, then process it into another power storage system that can be used instead of discarding it. Wow. That's it. That's very interesting. So just a little bit about your background. Did you study anything in terms of engineering or in terms of recycling before you started set up this company? Okay, when I started the whole thing, uh, that's when I was a kid. Mm. Let's say it's a God-given talent. Mm. I used to have like feel like having what I can't afford. <laughs> so those, like what? <laughs> let's say your mom bought you a kid car. Yeah, okay. I can't buy it. I have to get it from my own way. Mm. So go to a scrap, get some motors, come and buy it together to get whatever you want. Mm. We, we need light to play at night in the village. I have to get light for it. So we're using sand what you recycle it. But I didn't know it was even recycled. We're just trying <laughs> to just get, playing around. Yeah, yeah. To get what you want from the waste. Mm. And so senior high school I realized you recycling. Mm. You know, like boom. Then I'm doing something. <laughs> yeah just doing something. So the journey actually started when I was a kid. Okay. Trying to play around. Education came in when I was in senior high school, like mm. the little bit physics that we learned. But mm. ninety percent of what I'm doing is coming from what God's given me. Wow. So you self taught yourself? Yes. That's, that, that's really nice. So I want to come down to, so obviously you are dealing with um, e-cycle and you are dealing with recycled items. So in Ghana, we are mostly, I'm sure you are familiar, we're mostly dependent on fossil fuels. Yes. Where we are still trying our best to, you know, transition towards solar and all these other electronic devices. Mm -hmm. What's your take as, as an expert in, on, on that front? Okay, uh, it's really pity when you turn around and in Ghana is all roofs are empty, mm. no solar panels, but there's sunlight. Mm. Or even the developed countries like China and others, they are trying to build solar plants, mm. but they don't have enough sun. Ghana, we have, or Africa, we have more sun and we are not using it. Mm. And when, in my research, I realized that people like to use solar, but mm. the cost involved was really Expensive, scary yeah. because the upfront payment was big. So when we came out with our product, we built a power bank. Mm. So at least if you cannot afford the whole power system for like solar power system for your house or your individual usage, you could patronize the power bank, which is a bit affordable. Mm. Then maybe as time goes on, we are good. So eliminating uh, the other, uh, or promoting solar, we have to actually make sure it's cheaper. Mm. That's what we are trying to do. Mm. In the face of the poultry farmers, we are giving them a reliable light mm. that is able to give, all they need is light. Mm. 
So we are able to recycle this waste and build power banks for them that you can give them 24 7 like that. They wouldn't have problem. Mm, so they don't have to like wait till the following morning to go to the no, farm. No. They can just do everything yes. right there. Yes. Okay. So we're, we're going to come straight into some of the products mm. that you guys have. And then, okay. yeah. So I'll be speaking with Robert Inso, the chief executive secretary for eCycle. And he's a young engineer who's been able to build a power pack that provides electricity four times more than that of a laptop and even televisions. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. Welcome off on our break on BizTech. I'm sure you're familiar that we've changed our position. Yes, that's because Robert is going to take us through a brief demonstration of how the e-cycle, which is the battery pack that he's developed, works. Robert, so yeah. I've been having a very interesting conversation with mm. you, and now we are in front here with the e-cycle. I see it's written, stay green, save, save the, the earth. earth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you stay green, you save the earth. Yes, yeah, so, so just be before we go into the demonstration, what went into building this pack? Okay, uh, the power bank consists of three main components okay which is the battery mm. that we have the inverter that does the conversion mm. and then the house and other components that will help you monitor the power flow okay. that is the three main components okay so when you get the power pack it's complete everything mm. is inside okay the only thing you need is your extension board extension board, power okay. whatever device you want okay so the first thing is you plug in your extension mm. to okay the extension outlet all right. On it. Then you turn it on. Okay, I see a little yes. fan. So, so the fan indicates that it's on. You also okay. have indicator light that shows that it's on. Okay. If there's in darkness. All right. And all you need is your device to power. To okay. Power it. Plug it to your extension. Wow. And boom. Yeah, wow, it's way. charging. Yes. My yeah. on the screen. Yeah, it's actually charging. Yes. <laughs> so that is all. Yeah. Your TV, your laptop, whatever you want power, you can add it to your extension. Yeah. Excluding pressing iron, kettle, rice cooker, okay. or any device that produces heat, oh, means okay. it consumes more power. And okay, this, so you use more of the, the device that don't produce a yes, lot of the like heat. like the laptop, okay. the TV, the light, and mm. other stuff. Fan is included. Fan is included. Yeah. Okay, so, in, um, so this runs for 24-7. Yes. And you are sure this is not going to go off at any point? <laughs> okay, it comes with a solar panel. Okay. So during the daytime it's recharges whilst you're using oh on and its own night. yes on its own wow you on don't need the... to put it in the sun or anything no the power bank should be indoors and then oh, the panel okay. will be on the roof okay or mounted at a safe place okay so you plug in the panel mm. to recharge it mm. and some others prefer to use a U ups ups okay so with the ups method we have the ac inlet where you plug to light mm. then you plug whatever device you want to it okay. so when the light goes off it is switch on continuously for you to have a continuous power flow. Mm -hmm. So the, uh, then it is now serving as UPS mm -hmm. instead of a power bank alone. Okay, yeah. wow. And it has a higher capacity as compared to UPS. Mm -hmm. It has a capacity of 5,000 watt. Wow. Which is, the UPS is somewhere around 300, somewhere 250 and all that. So mm -hmm. there's a huge difference between our power pack and then the UPS and other stuff. Mm -hmm. And also customized based on the customer need. Yeah. Not everybody can afford. Yeah. Remember I said we are trying to cut down the cost of cut solar. Down the cost, yeah. So if you can't afford the bigger version, you can buy the smaller, the smaller version, version and later on upgrade okay. it. So this is the bigger version? No, we have a, the you giant have actually whole bigger. house. Okay, so this is actually the smaller version. Yes. And how much is this? Okay, this goes for 1,700 without the solar panel. Okay. 2,500 with the solar panel. Okay, yes. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you've, you've been running eCycle for some time now. Yeah. Um, you said since 2019. Yes, registered 2019. Registered 2019. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so what, what's the structure like? Um, are you working with a team or it's just you alone? Okay, now we're a team. Okay. I started with my one of my teachers mm. from high school. He was helping with the designs and other stuff. Mm -hmm. What okay. I was doing technical. Mm. But I thought of teamwork is very important. Mm -hmm. You might have the idea, but not the time. Not the time to or execute the money it. to push. Mm. So we try to build a team that can work. Mm -hmm. But we don't just work with anybody. We don't just bring anybody to the team. Mm -hmm. We look for people who have a common vision to what we want. Mm. We don't just work at achieving money, we are solving mm. a problem. Yeah. Let the problem be the first priority. Mm. And if you have such a person, you are welcome to work with us. Yeah. Your contribution is also valued. Yeah. Yeah. And the future to, before we end, we are starting an educational system. Okay. Well, I felt uh, our education system is 
more of theory than practical. Practical, yeah. We have the practicals in school. We are going to universities and other schools to mm. also add the practical education. Mm. Ine is an example. We have a contract with them where we go there to teach the students mm. these practical skills, like solar, the power bank, necklace, other stuff. Anything practical that can help their course to mm. be a plus to them. That's great. what we are doing. Right. And that's the future for each right. Great. So finally, before we go, have you had any support from government? Because I think this is very innovative. Have you had anyone come to you and say, hey, we like what you guys are doing. We want to partner with you. We've had comments from the government, but not support <laughs> as That's financial support. support because, uh, John Kuma was once at our plastic site. Okay. He made a positive, he made a positive comment, but <laughs> we are still waiting for the results. Maybe God will bring it later. Maybe he will. That's 2020 that he visited our plastic site to check what we are doing. She gave us the right words that mm. could keep us going. But financial support... We are still working on it. Okay. That's why we also try not to move fully to NGO. For mm -hmm. if you move to NGO, it will show you that you can't make money on your own. Mm -hmm. But at eCycle, we are currently making our own money, making our own pushing money. it small, small, hoping that people who also have a common vision that were not able to start it, but now better in life or making it can come in and be like, oh, I can push, or I want to push you to go to the next level. Mm. But I wasn't able to achieve it. Now that you're doing let me help you achieve it. Yeah. We are waiting for people to mm. push in. And right. we are also trying our own way to right. generate funds for e-cycle to work. All right. Yeah. Robert, many thanks for your time yeah. and all the best in the, all that sure. you do. Thank you. I've been speaking with Robert Inso, and he's the Chief Executive Officer for eCycle, and he's also a young man who's been able to build a battery pack that is able to charge laptops 24 7 and also televisions as well he's been my guest on this week's edition of this tech my name is marley ahumega many thanks for watching thank you marley ahumega for that report up next is blizzard lines <laughs> To our very first story, the Bank of Ghana has included illegal forex bureaus trading as part of the reasons for the city depreciation against major trading currencies. According to the central bank, some forex companies are flouting the law governing forex operations in the country. A report by Ghana Web stated that some forex bureaus in Accra are selling a dollar for nine cities, 98 pesos whilst others are selling it for 10 cities, 10 pesos. This practice, according to BOG, distorts the forex market and only fuels the free fall of the CD. Meanwhile, a leading member of the new patriotic party, Gabi Asari Otredaku, has also accused some forex traders of creating artificial shortages on the market to hike the prices of the currencies they deal in. In a tweet that was accompanied by a video, Otredaku wrote, This is what some forex exchange traders in Accra are suspected to be doing. They suck up the effects from the other players, which allows you to create artificial shortages in certain quarters and then hide them up in pricing it. Information Minister Kojo Opon Kroma has disclosed that government is about to inject two billion dollars into the alien economy. Kojo Opon Kroma noted this in an interview with Ghana Web and stated that this means the rapid fall of the city will be a thing of the past. Since the start of this year, the Ghana city has suffered has suffered persistent depreciation against major trading currencies, especially the U.S. dollar. As of July this year, the city lost its volume by more than 20%. The local currency is now trading above 10 cities to 1 U.S. dollar on the exchange rate market. But the minister allaying the fears of citizens revealed that while $750 million is expected from the Afro Exim Bank this week, the COCO syndicated loan will add $1.3 billion. These monies, he said, are expected to hit the Bank of Ghana's account. Guta President Dr. Joseph Obin has stated that if Ghana's tax systems are devoid of disparities, compliance level could increase significantly. Speaking to Ghana Web at a national tax forum on August 23rd, Dr. Obin said most of the tax issues the country is faced with are due to unfair.
fairness and the expensive nature of taxes. There should be uh, fairness in the tax administration. The tax system it should bring parity and fairness. Uh, where there's discretion and all that, like in the case of um, La, La Bianca and all that, then pe uh, there's a loophole that uh, people take advantage and all that. It doesn't help anybody. So if the tax administration or the tax system is such that um, everybody is paying the same, that there's no cost for anybody to even cut corners. Then of course we are getting there. But having said all these things, if the taxes are not affordable, the compliance level becomes very uh, difficult. People do not find it difficult to comply because they cannot uh, pay. Sometimes the taxes that we uh, we pay here is quite assertive, and that's why the issue of the benchmark um, argument came. Because we then we have to meet with government and say that the duties that we pay in this part of the world is too much. We are talking about 55 to 65 percent of our invoice values, and it's not, never happened in any part of the world. Imani Vice President Bryce Simmons has labeled Soko Loans and True City as two illegal financial institutions operating in Ghana. According to him, Soko Loan, which has a branch in Nigeria, has now set up a shop in Ghana where unsuspecting victims work with them for loans. He further said, True City, owned by Jen Finscap, is also an unregistered company in Ghana. Taken to micro blogging site Twitter to share his grievances, Bryce Simmons asserted that regulators of financial institutions in the country were being inactive to chase out these illegal businesses. General Secretary of Gau, Edward Kariwe, has accused the IMF of being part of Ghana's problems. According to him, many Ghanaians lost their jobs between 1980 and 1990 after the IMF implemented economic recovery and structural adjustment programs as part of the measures to save the ailing economy. He added that, unlike Europe and America where unemployed people are given allowances to help them survive in the economy, the case of Ghana is different. IMF has been part of Ghana's problem because uh, since 1980s to 90s, based on the IMF conditionalities and then uh, policy directions, they implemented the economic recovery program and then the structural adjustment program. And a lot of workers lost their jobs, you know, and those workers have never gotten just their jobs back. We know the last one, they put a ban on employment in the, uh, in the government sector, you know, and that is not the way to go. But it is the fault of our government because you fail to do the right thing. And when you fail to do the right thing, of course, you always run to IMF. But you, when you run to somebody who does not have a solution, but rather a problem you know, it's part of the problem of, for which you are looking for a solution. Then I blame uh, 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 Ghana government for going to IMF. Otherwise, there is no need to go to IMF. The Ghana Union of Traders Association has rescinded its decision to embark on a demonstration scheduled for August 29th to demand a solution to Ghana's city depreciation and harsh economic conditions. The traders agreed to shut down all shops on the stated date in protest of the city's continuous fall, which has affected their working capital and their businesses. The decision to call off the demonstration, according to media reports, was reached after the deliberation among members of the Council of State on August 25th and members of the business community, which consists of the leadership of Market Women Association, Guta, Mobile Phone Dealers and Aboso Kind Spare Parts Dealers Association. Some members of the business community said there will be a press conference to address the media after signing a resolution to rescind the decision and also redraw the intended demonstration. Meanwhile, laying forward a plethora of issues during a press conference on August 22nd, the Guta president, Dr. Joseph Obin, said, despite the constant complaint about the impact of the city depreciation, the situation has only worsened. Guta is of the belief that the country is capable of employing measures to address these issues. <laughs>
Thank you very much for joining us on today's edition of Best Tech on Ghana Web TV. Before we go, do log on to www.ghanaweb.com for more stories. Do well to follow us on all social media platforms on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the Ghana Web. On YouTube, Ghana Web TV. I am Ernestina Sewa Asante. Do have a lovely weekend. Sansa to him, come over, ya be beam. Nancy made a damn man for an answer was a crew, my issue, skin, or by no one's a move, but so I mo package. Just so you don't even look like your problems. We best was a gun, a bank crowd, the canal walk, or see a city be our two baby. So, who miss had an anonymous say, yeah, entertainment industry, a moon como, nay, yeah, trends be our cosso, feud be beef be fillers, just be a shisha shibby, and I just say, my uncle to train you and that's my bitch, my chum. In Tina, what you did. In some media, a theater bank, yen same America, I'm a man trying home, and near Quaba, you own in a mabbe single hammer. Ah, made off for me, my Quaba, no one's own, and say the Mubo Modiana Mushem Mushen, and the Mumbe Bomabasso, Mumam come all honours to El Dretchy. Nancy make us every Bomabasso, the day the Mumbis and your mother for a be a son. Nan, come on, dear Dorsum. Just say big stories say PMO a entertainment industry. Who nim say KKDD woho? I on the Paul Adumo trade woho. Tiny in his stone boy and so do who be a dinner who did some other bets woho. And as Stella Abasil, we no friend is a gospel beef. I on the Obapa Christian woho. Now just say some of me who nim me famous face. Some of my young shots in fi a year stone boy and a tiny as a mu beef ye mu say a beef was a young top power was a. I don't really get it, but one of nim ni a question. Some of me chire mu a year a. Stone boy, or call hits of him, and now call to say, Miss, what the tiny send back to Jan at say, what the Chilima, and I say, or the Kebby, which him as some show promoter be a Chiana Castle and come back for me, but Yamu to win Pierre Honum, a Benumuki Cassie, sometimes tiny cry with Yan for shows on, but that I haven't confirmed. A artist, a moon is assembled, will be at an anime to me. Now, a you want to me and Bain Aja. Promote a quarter time can or the cosy police station says, I say, Oh, she a year two thousand in the idea, and on for carnival. man. It's a stone boy call away his stuff a mono cotia some no so, or be an a year near the tiny door in Nippa, in ten a job, or two thousand at a so quite say, or unprofessional assembly switcher. Now, your hoy almost like two months after the whole issue now, a year tiny call OKFM, and I bake could be sunny so. Sans and Nana was the O. Now, who a whole legend, senior man two thousand, and I was the old decay, no shame was it, and yes, an assembly. Naka ko on chile muna ko on kodi ni baby no do chu just say yeah stone boy make we queen one and na was studio at that time I just say what penny is to say stone boy in chile and I say it was for fame of whatever it is no omu ni na there some bunch of fools who be so chile mu ba chima I just say oni mi nyansi bi I just say one dream kwechi now the better than I was ah then I was yes I only pan it and can I come in and I just so a boy and I say me baby pray so stone boy or who's a boy or no outside the country or bad back no call hits of him. In the head of them, one or not, so then I do call you to just or say or share video. No, I am here because or no, no, they're not going to bad intention or he was just helping a brother. You know what I mean? Just say, Papa Moose and Yemu Ye. Now, Kako Yes, I Kako Yiki be a man, but Stone Boy or explaining the side of his story. No, the two just also industry, Mkofun Penasen. Also, just say it's just pure hatred or no, be asking me and some of fun hotel. So, no, dear industry, there's nothing that surprises no sense to the car too. Just say, I saw on him said tiny, I was some side be into a one cassa and yana one. But me call tiny page, Miss Mukosh Shem Munsa will be the same to just on Sushi Shem Kakra. Munsa, I say, shut our lair down for Binia, dainty, be a sa, aha, well, we named it down. Come on, no, but me name said back sorry, be sure, but it looks like. Tiny Shatawale or one side, but Sena Yonquin, Yonquin. It's a year stone by the two Jan or Chemose. Tiny year in the interview, Cassie, eh, one born in the Adibos and Yasanet. There are no starting the career in the first album, any or you or no my day 
this is a Nigerian word be eh o se enu no feature no no so wey or no so more o se de no so be feature ni bitian ka ti ka ti ka ti some one one said that ti ase inti se mi be two jana stop mo so so se se we di tiny ho ya ma fu che ma tiny pa ni chono later na and the dustin sanso so fre eh tiny so no so fa ni ne side be to jan se ase mi lo kwaka one side na one ka ya kwase wa ya aha well, okay, I say tiny about what he was here. He hits up and put present that's enough of your name. Say, send a beckle tiny by also. No, though he still maintains send or cast it. They are a bunch of fools and it because I simply by moon see one side by move his wounds. Watch him. I was afraid tiny one for this and somebody they be brave. Beckle, we are tiny cocoa pie just interview giddy giddy giddy. It's you know so a year checker up upon it. Chow now then then but stone boy the one castle upon it. Chow they be also no one can maintain it now. Seven and the dust didn't look to moon. Say, I said they were and the dust. Can assess any casting more than a becker a year bunch of fools in who but actually or chessania the batman for chima eh tiny now I come out was a interview giddy giddy you but of course sometimes also boo on us all can once I mean you'll be an adventure boo on he feels like ah why would you disrespect me but not papa muna ope but in some of the baby but I don't know so wow Felix has said yeah tiny I'll be part a year a head of family make quick in a prince check and no more or tell no would you decide so up a year stone boy so China so we see and you want to and then in the end, face one in chas and people. I am on my own trust, and I'm saying I met two a year KKD story in a few. My main fight a gospel beef, ye a embra. Ubekaya, a stellar abbasil veteran, a unum to me, just say, Mammy, I just won't send away. She said, One would book me recent pictures, sir. Like she doesn't even look her age, stellar than who you have a year a day. Oh, my father, I have my baby in Domi. And you know, baby, come my young conco monoso. So, I have a still not take you to a Facebook now. A year flyer beer or Papa Christia at 20. Who's a non in it? That's to say, the name that was about their performing. And all the of of fast up with South Fly and all the troll say it is fake. Also, or Papa and contact 10 year for a year show beyond your own cast or bash show beyond it is fake. No fans for and disregard it. Now, so better than I say, ah. Now, who do any obey any number two show so I'm so nipani ba? How do you do that? Maybe we just say gospel. There sometimes things really pass, but that is not the right thing to do. In other words, I'm able to do number two. I'm about to wear the one yard. I'm about to pass to the next level. Bye. Now, number two, I'm about to wear some black pants. Now, the one who watch the video, your interview, or Koye, you know, they are say, oh, say, say. Or a yistala fella say why any boni bidia any open a chamo fan chamo man fusa ah that is me you are not showing remorse who unka se bia we nu who sadena we ene intra koemu ba pe so we are fusa ah se who was side or ba pe kan ya kan se eh a yestala abasil veteran gospel musician so who say ni ni nim da hono na na to say na na nka enya ne da e se san ka stella no etwi phone e frere no e bi san so me ba na de na odi mani ma tu fu yi flyer so on him say me ba no me nka ashi na oyi but ono do as of bad time na se na work as of bad time oba ye adun so go na se ye ye pepa won twa no we dey as stella e twa 91 ya dem say eh now, who's a who's a be who in an Indian Jawan Friday? And I want you to say energy now, fan friend. Mapu do also a ye or Bapa with your family. Now, say better than a who say a year a or Bapa Christie and a seller of Basimukosia or ye abnasa or filia. I know near abom listening be a room to fall the ababeto out. Now, we who's a one hag one hag in a room so in a sass of new trap in your beshe. Ye who's a ditchy and a ye who say a year. Still, I'm so I call a year okay. If I'm only allowed my co-interview, I'm going to say, "Oh, Chema, I say, what the hell? What the hell? Say, who to me? Oh, I say, who are Papa Christopher? Only who need relationship? I on share. I share that in the news that yesterday, I was down for no half an idea. We need him at all. I say, one friend, one bona man. If you want, I say, who do need him at all? Now, what can say? One year, I now say, who can carry out to 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 Papa? So, until I Chema, I know the all my warning. Stella Abasi, I say, you must be in front of him to program. So, say we are so full. Say we are sorry. Say we are quiet. Say we are you know we are not down for make sure say. Would they need him to program so I be catch and of course she has a point. Or Chema sometimes we have show on certain both shows they bring. In terms of the name to 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 to, now the fans for this or be ba. Now she be or be ko be a one ba one ba. What can you say? Ah, I say Stella. We need to program so. But every grandpa now he on will be a friend. You talk about show. We make sure so we be on of course. You now yes, cause why would you put someone? Also, look at the day and the year and say. I did a multi art ticket to a It is a word just So, why would you put my name on it? And I said, Maybe to know, say, Oh, now, where did I say, Bianca, and yes, but sister, you're saying, Do you want that? Ghana, now, this interview is taking my time. I'm here for two weeks. We ain't come home, but I need to address it. Because me and Tanasi, you're more quiet and to home, I drug is to make me a woman. You cannot be disrespectful and rude to your mother. 
say eh bia me de me no be sato e eh, no so na me fa so na be bo am ya what the hell oh what the hell no way no way say eh 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 me ni ni relationship i don't know her Kwesi cheda kwa keke di na wachi de o trendy ni muadi. From aya on the Paul Aduma trendy to book yo so ready ya chesa. Meka me nyaa bedu se nkomo ni ebeka ba mumbo de na mo fa video ni sene ma me ko sense na na ye dru so na ma abeka ni di emu ye den ankasa. Na aya keke di ai oni aya captain smart aya interview bibo aya onua. No di tu ja so as a Paul Aduma trendy as a aye o o o o man ho kwang ma te se wo yu su ne ye bibia keke te se onya ne platform na na te se oba na wabeke ka ka nsem bi na wa wo ni ne kwa kwa ye se kwa ko bo government ne chi na te se oba ka nwa asem poto no chi mo se wo de o ye ni 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 te se ne bucket wa kra te se ade na wo man ho kwang na wo ye sa nti te se wo de bo modin ana koso a na de ase wo pese wo di di pen fu bia tama wo ye yi na party na nkasa ase in some day, I do also, but near one match, I say a trendy a part a cake a decan if I a a poll at much when I'm baby bossing or Tima a year some time ago, be a year any party be and a poll at much, Tima poll at much, one means our warrior, bear my warrior for or Tima dear rabbit be bad part. Tinassin, hm, now say run and yen a year. Kwa sababu kikeke diche mo ni mnyele na yeye ni yele, uchema sisi tayi nse, unasa, odin huu chuchu na odin huu tetare na, na uchema na ata asa judge mita kwa hisa sisi chiki, uchema, ee no bema waifu, banya no neva beka, sawo, ejo sisi, sisi tayi odin huu chuchu ni ni adi, ni 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 chuchu kwa mwanza asa boys boys hivyo tu wankafu, na 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 kwa umpena bi, umpena bi na sisi, ee you Paul, I do much in one seminar. I can't quite see. Nene, nene, man, for shame! You say Paul, I'm so bad. I'm not sure. 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 i am I know what you must do. I say, in some of the two just say, eh, lady, no one in the buy no. A young name penna who speculate to say a name penna, or say, and not just a womb, me at one friendly dear mammy, because or say, wouldn't him say a meal cry or name we a yam sing a year or a year or a poor no, and as a woe cry, and I don't know, cause eh, sister, I didn't want to tie and I say, be a new scanty, or say, get one yardy. Mother say, eh. Obi aya kasma to so so wa be defending ho se wa se chi na wayi eye keke the weak points bi aba na o chire mo mbumia na sansem ni o ken yi obeya okoko to train sem en sem e twen e chi o to train sem ba se e sense ade a wo ye yi e betime di asem aba be ba na den de ho ko fa sa keke di asem na ba na ye se eh po asem aba na ye ke wo pese wo twen twen sem ko nya nya ko fifi funa se but keke di sem sem e betu jana afu chema eh se na e po la do mo twen wo sa che but me dey mean it is just mere speculation na ja po so so betu to be man no chema keke di one kan ye te sem sem o di to jana wan fe ni di amamia na keke di ya kra e ye interview on e ye captain smart ye no di sem bi to ja be di be bi ye do ni de in pay for me sem ma me ni mara Keke di se onu do pe reading o don se mu keke di na adwe mu do kasa hu se o pe hini nya senini keke di be bia wo bia metu chema no chema e you one time be no read the book na ne 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 nka de se ni plan a jadeng ni girl bi eh girl na che se wo read the book na system ni me se no order ni mo i don't even know the position but chema book ni na che se edu be bia so flip it na i just se me ka I can't get it. Ne, just sister, you who are you? Put the motion video and I'm the moon seeing a cake the kind. Just a me, oh, so oh, oh, be also in an adam's new about the moon seeing video and I'm the moon seeing one summer cake the kind. Ah, but 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 I couldn't have been in it down. Now I am not the main sack and a cat crap. Men may sack and a cat crane to New Zealand or why did you know? Or the baby, then I'm sure make me the beer book. I mean, I can't have for a cat crap. Now me the beer book. Because eh no, pay he dear now. What scenario I say can send me say. Benim say where did we are now? We post it on Twitter. Ah, na 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 ma be na na eh ah 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 na abba na ma be can say eh. I'm going to focus say eh. No pay he now. What can I say? I say where did I carry one pen? My son, but ma ma can't book the mood. They want to flip pages. Hey, take it. Ayo, 
some of the when you are carrying me, you say be aye, read and learn. It's my man and woe, and I'm so many years ago, but 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 I'm so many years ago, See through how fits baby a be a unse as a net neti. It's just a black panty pen or shem. Now just a nipples in here. Didn't you know who said that hope fee? Now round that what they just say. Now just say Ghana and Amodi. Now maybe if you feel you soon. What's the one turn for a year indecent exposure? Say where you know who I just had down. Just say the ultra ban kuku musa mene woka say ya. What's it thirty days? Now concert you are going. Now what's it? Pictures from it a buy. Now just say trendy with social media. Now just say. And then authorities want to know just what's on or what could be a gay. Which is my sad time not sharing the day. I don't know. Be able be you who who you say you draw a pen. I wish. Why are you trying to sell out there? Now, yes, some people too. Then I'm in the better social media. They say, hey, we want that way. Mumba, Mumba, you need better Ghana. I say, now Mumba, you need a few other. Let me say, ah, a few other didn't be here day one. Now I say, ah, I'm a T M. Kwesiata album launch no ye no I son of Jacob one one at I na ifi odo share ni sister idi pe 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 you say idi brother say one pay ni sister we chema sister e ye ifi ya we sister muni ne ne guwe na say ne posi say oh mu kai say picture ye ne ne de ho ya mu share dressing na we say e say we bet ni sister e ifi odo na one of e Twitter Twitter free but someone say we de mu mu pass them no aku target say mu bet ni sister. If you are doing my thing, and if you are doing who in a case, oh yeah, yawn, yawn, no yawn, dear. Me to be for manu, cut to be manu. But I say, well, today my chrome hardy, so I can't. We want that for that law now. We want. We apply with chrome hardy, and I can't. We bet today celebrities. We bet today by any. Oh yeah, yeah. If you are doing, just bet my body body in baby. But if you are today man, we want to be a worker. Also, no, they are in life. It's on one choice. No person will expose me. It will not change them to me. But meaning, say, Ghana, if you will get there, just bet me a case. We want to be because of say indecent exposure. And I say, where you. Who too much? So I'm going to do a yen so you be meaning how you guys are going to react to it. If you are just looking at how it's raw, eh? Daughter of Mama Water, eh? I could see a moon goddess. I know so many things. I know so many children, so many children mafia. I'm finding bunny crying children. Now they just say, eh? Daughter of Mama Water, oh yeah, na. Oh, be kaya some lady be. I saw so so candles. So you must have seen who say, oh yeah, spiritualist be sir. So so candles. Now they be kaya say, eh? I some way jai. For a black stars play also, a castro we only who be not one or two train or the new cojenia. Then say we were kind of once and put on mass and we jump or reply. Since they did better trend, yet I say, you see, after that, I say, go for me, dear, the daughter of my mother, and I say, Nadine, that was since you know, see, if I now my milk away, take talk out of a friend, I could see a moon goddess. Now, I say, only the answer of five and 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 five I see Bulanga, I said, I don't know how to say that. 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 No, no, so after cards, yeah, mami, you can. But no, then they didn't get cards, yeah. Who ordered to a yeah, did you go? You be no, say, and sister, oh, she we are. No, so no, don't find a cause your moon goddess. But find a cause your weed goddess. Or tell me, oh, she weed. No, but you know, I just say, okay, okay, can send me a hundred. I know best that one. And then I hear a daughter of mami or ten, ten, two, three, five, so no, so on no day. A year fi ashwa, so so best ten and cause a cause. So I say, man, I be kind of one. So so man, the chance so come back as so moon goddess me part. So many say be, but one yet. It's in this sense, also on in the bed daily. It's in your room, ha. Me ni muso be mani egi. It's a thirty days or two months. It's in your best sibia. It's in your dimu chimu. Eba be tuja. Hi, this is your sister, Efia Moon Goddess. Today, I'm going to do reading on Akosia Reed Goddess. Spirit, show me more on Akosia Reed Goddess. Eu como não deu mais esse show, para o modo de mamãe entrar em um cacra, na época o bama boninha a canina, dá bem som. Mary Mary woke up and said, "Mo chee, mo se mo jalai, mo se mo ntemo." I said, "Namiso." Now then, I go to her. I say, "Ah, 
doggy sex position ya edi ye edi je ye ni kakra ye physiotherapist via bejina wo se e ma stroke na wo se ne na no kwa na ma stroke anka wo beku mu wo nya nka anka wo wu na me se eh wa ma ba se e ma stroke nti anka mo nsa sana mo nya missionary mo se mo pa missionary doggy ala wo be ye na so le beto de ma fo se ah na wo fi ayi yi doggy aye na na no mo fi ayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayayay
na ife de e de na do oni kwa chere Nigeria. We say, hey, shata wa la se, wa kasa wa tun te sue gufe na wa osando wa kachere ma san so ase biem. Ba shata de e hunu se, hey, wa de na mo te sa. Bibi ana se, mo pesa mo rush na mo de e di ye news bi. Ose nye sa nete. Nye di se bi akwa kwa ye e ye, akwa kwa ye promotion o. E ye to bi keke no. It's also ye business related. Nte na odi ne niya chere Nigeria. Ne nye se na mo kane na ma fuche ma se nye ti bi ano. Who can be promoted? Why on so do one worker say you don't need help from them? I say I say, what say I no mark who can use the who can use the sad band and the same music. What say I say? But what say I say? Well, in so do I change music? Yes, I need to. So yes, I work to promote. You know, say one don't yeah, he's big. He doesn't need your promotion. When I say O'Shea, you say baddest. I Nigerian you cross dresser. I'm Bob Brisky. Now you call Barry Ma or dresser so be a just a one who calls a moon refer to say or your Barry Ma. Mommy of Lagos, I say na Miki. Bob Brisky chemo di ni ni ba betre Ghana. Now just so or 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 they fly you to any Instagram page or no kasa or restricted comment section. I'm calling I'm calling better say na you be kaji egumu. But in some man say Bob Brisky so di ni ni check room hasi. Now man fusi hey Bob. And then I told na oba na media to na se bi a beje woni kakra ba unze gana ha de ye de bi a we boba be ma ye be ma gana jolo papa 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 na na wa kan wa no ahwe na eye nse bi betu da na eye twitter ni bi be ko bi sa sam george ai sam george se sam wa ti se bo brisky so oba gana won se sam george oni sa lgbtq sa ma eyi eyi community oni won won kakra no so gana ha de ye hospital bo ye bi eyi apun betumi aba na so ka hu se na wo krom ha se nti obeje ne ni a na so o e se de e bro so ai no no beti se o se ba de stan kasa ai na wo twi de mm koma no Ne dosu, wa mwa uni mse ya gospel bifi, ya Stella Abasioni, ya Bapa Christidi, ya dinchini mwaba, ya uni mse, bibi sasu be piefye cha, se piefye cha ya uni mse ya nsu ya wahase, ya tiny, ya shata wale, KKD, senior man, uni mse ni se miya wabe tutuwa, ayy KKD, boy, ni jina ya de bre munti, ama bro ni, juma nesi, for this week, na midi meni sasu diye chime sheni ya koso, da sene, ni eti biya, meba babwa buwano, na medi asu, mwa 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 Mwadi ana moon share ni adena jese moon spread the good word that's ene ye besa nsu eshia. again Charlie I hope you're doing amazing guys this is a happy dance because I'm coming with good news <laughs> so guys it's a rainy morning I'm at work I'm currently at work I just hope nobody nobody comes out from here because I'm at work and I decided to come and make this short intro for you all I'm super excited I'm going somewhere I'm, I'm visiting an African country and it's fully sponsored yeah. I'm visiting my 13th African no 13th country and I'm super excited guys um the most exciting thing about this trip that I'm super excited is the fact that I'm going to be seeing gorillas whoa 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 I see on TikTok and I see on videos and I'm like I have to see this animal like but then most of the places that you would want to see them are super expensive so i'm super excited that this trip i'm really going to see gorillas guys let me know in the comment section take a wild guess let me know which african country you think i'm going this is going to be my 13th country and yeah i'm so excited i'm, I'm sure that explains why i'm in yellow today so guys in this vlog I'm going to be doing um, a prep. I usually don't prepare for a trip on YouTube. I'll usually just share my experience on Instagram. So if you're not following me on Instagram, please do so. Follow me. Um, same name is Stella Chanelli. And I'm super excited. Um, yeah. So I'm going to first work on my nails. This is my natural nails. I just had to use, um, what's it called? A gel overlay. This is how it looks like. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to change my nails, look fresh. Then I'm going to braid my hair. This is just a wig that I just had to put on. I'm going to braid my hair because 
on a trip you don't want to be like you don't want to be touching your hair you know what to do to your hair and then you go and do an activity and then your hair falls off blah 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 <laughs> i'm super excited yeah and also guys i also would want to share with you that on the 16th of september is my birthday and i'm going to turn 30 years old and yeah i remember there was a time that my 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 stella chanelli's age was trending on youtube and i was like hey how many people are, are asking how old i am because probably maybe the way i smile the way i act like maybe but people i'm sure you all would have thought i'm i'm like 22 23 please i'm turning 30 years soon and i'd like to give to the either the orphanage or do um give to the kids on the streets so if you like to join me by supporting kindly support me with these numbers um Stella Chanelli, it's it's available on wave you can send money to wave if you want to send me through western you know to a day a day on lemonade app or any of this uh, mobile mobile um mobile money platforms yes and if you're in ghana to mobile money on the same number you can also whatsapp me just to confirm if i'm the one yes i'm the one <laughs> so these numbers are available both on whatsapp on any 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 yes i'm turning 30 and i want to give to either the kids in the orphanage or kids on the street so please join me come support let's make this happen for my 30th birthday the plan is to give more than 30 people um at least a parcel at least just to make their day and that is how i intend to celebrate my birthday this year so please join me on this one by supporting yeah super excited okay back to my trip so i'm going to braid my hair and you, you guys are coming along i'm going to make my nails i'm going to park and yeah the last time i created a pack with me video i realized you all liked it so i'm going to be doing more of that henceforth and i'm super excited <laughs> <laughs> I'm super excited. Wow, the first sponsored, fully sponsored trip was in South Africa by the South African Tourism. This is also going to be by the, the government stories. I want you all to guess before I get there. Please let me know in the comment section. Yeah, but the clue is I'm going to be seeing gorillas for the first time in my life. Ah, I can't hide my excitement, so I'm super excited. So, yeah, let's go watch this vlog and let me know what you think about this vlog let's go guys let's go <laughs> Subscribe 
like and share all my videos i'm taking you today on my preparation towards my trip i would have done my toes pedicure but i already did that two weeks ago so i don't have to do that that i spent 80 ghana cities for pedicure so um yeah things are expensive in ghana now so i think you know that, that um, we are managing so yeah i hope you enjoyed um, watching this vlog please subscribe like and share as always i love you all good morning i'm currently here at the market and i had to get here very early before leaving um to work so i'm going to braid my hair and this is how it looks like from here good morning and yeah this is the lady who braids my hair hello auntie Marta. how are you <laughs> yeah so yeah I'm here at the salon. I have to come here very early. It's um, currently 6 30. I'm going to this the day before the trip and I still have to go to work so I want to quickly braid my hair, <laughs> then change my, my top, then go. So yeah, that's the plan now. Yeah. And as early early this morning, look at how busy it is here. the length of my hair. Morning. 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 Yeah. Auntie say hi. Hi. <laughs> so Auntie Mata is the one who usually braids my hair. So if you want her to braid your hair, I can I can share her contact with you. So you can come to the Madina market and get your hair done here. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, this is what I'm having for breakfast. Bored egg. You're all invited. I'm done with my hair. That's a matter. Let me show them my hair. Guys, let me know in the comment section if you like my hair. I really like it. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> this is how it looks like. And I use. I use this, this is what I use, I use the Berlin um, Passion Twist and it cost me 40 Ghana cities per bundle, I use 3 bundles So guys, um, I'm done with my hair, I really love it and I got myself some Adbelika Aklo, it's made from cassava and, and it's fried, so this is how it looks like, you're all invited it goes so well with coconut, so I'm having it with coconut. My hair cost me um, 180 Ghana cities. I can't believe that I paid a cheaper hair than my nails. My nails was even more expensive <laughs> than my hair, but then again, things are getting expensive. So yeah, I think my hair is actually very affordable because um, it's cheaper at the local joints than if you go to a luxurious joint. Um, Dan I'm heading to work. Um, I'll catch you guys when I'm back home to start packing for the trip. See you guys. I love you. So guys, this is the final lapse of my preparing for this trip. And yes, as you can see, I have all my things ready. Don't get scared. These are very lightweight things. <laughs> and I'm obviously going to leave some. But then for now, this is what I have packed. And so you all are going to pack with me. The last time I packed with you, I realized a lot of people were like, oh, Stella, you should be doing this more often. So, yeah, I'm here and um, I'm packing tonight so I don't get, I don't forget anything. And tomorrow is the trip. So, yeah, come with me. So, we're going to start with clothes. I mean, clothes. And I'm going to divide them into dresses, jeans. I'm going to carry just two jeans and then the rest will be top because I can keep changing the tops to look like have different jeans you get it you get it if you don't get it <laughs> so yeah we're going to start with clothes more clothes more clothes i just figured that my things are going to be too much so i'm going to leave this too and my friend also mentioned to me that it's a little chilly so i came with jacket two jackets 
I don't know why I'm carrying two black jackets. Should I leave one? Should I not leave one? Should I leave one? Should I not leave one? Um, guys, should I leave one? This is short. This is long. All right. So I'm going to add them. You have to arrange your things such that everything will enter. And I'm leaving this space for my shoes, my slippers, and also space just in case I get there and I buy some clothes I can carry. So, yes. And of course, bikini, panties, bikini. <laughs> so, guys, the next is going to go with my... I have one slippers, two sandals, and... and um, two sneakers, but then I'm going to wear this on my way to the airport, so I don't have to pack this I think two sneakers will do or should I do you think I should take a black sneakers or I've been wearing the black sneakers for so long in my YouTube videos I'm sure you all have seen you are tired of that sneakers So I'm contemplating whether to take this or this I'm sure you all are tired of seeing these sneakers. So I'm just going to go with this then I have here my sunglasses, my bandage, my touch light, which is very important. And because my final destination, we are going to somewhere that has um, somewhere that is full of nature. I already said in my first video that you all should guess where I'm going based on how I'm packing. I'm sure by now you you even know my final destination already. Of course, two sunglasses, just a small bag for to carry my personal belongings bandage because just in case i get hurt and i also have um all my jewelry here i didn't take a lot this time around because i know um i might not use them all then my toiletries toiletries my body cream my oils my um styling gel my makeup hasn't even come yet trying to pack as little as possible guys i received this beautiful package from a subscriber she is called Ella Cole. Hey, guys, let me know what this is. <laughs> but this is the name of the brand. Oh, it's funny how she was able to get my size right. I wear thirty nine forty, and she got my size right. Like she got to me yesterday. She says happy birthday in advance. Let me know in the comment section if you want some, so that she can arrange. She brings it from I think Germany or something. Yes, I'll confirm that. So yeah, and then let me just add a torch light. My panties which you can't see <laughs> then a little handbag because I'm going with two bags when I went to SA I carried one bag but this time around so this bag is going to contain my personal belongings that is my drone my laptop my um what's it called my camera everything and then just one spare dress just in case I lose this bag I won't find myself stranded so which I don't hope and pray for but then yeah so that's what I'm going to do so I think then I'm going to add my makeup my passport into my handbag and then my body cream and oh I forgot to mention that I also have I also have um, a sewing kit a sewing kit inside my jewelry box so just in case um, my dress gets torn I won't find myself wanting I'm going to come I'm also going to carry um, a universal charger which I've showed you in my previous video before I've showed you guys before I hope you found this video helpful let me know if you want more of this video if I'm also traveling locally let me know if you like this kind of content I'm going to close this bag carry my laptop carry my personal belongings inside this bag and one of the things that you can forget easily is your purse which is lying right in front of me in you know, your phone charger so i've kept them all here so i can just carry them all so i can just car have um, a, la a hand language so yeah i hope you enjoyed watching this vlog as much as i enjoyed being here as much as i enjoyed um preparing for this trip i'm super excited i am very 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 excited it's it's quite late now it's almost 10 p.m it's very late so that's why <laughs> My cousin is behind the camera and she's just laughing. So, yeah, I'm going to sleep and yeah. Ooh, let me just soak some energy. I get I get very excited whenever it's a trip. You all know I like traveling. Forget. I, I know some of you say, oh, when you sit in the plane, guess what? Please. I want I want to be your want to be in your space i really like i really like the fact that you are leaving your home country to another country and you get a chance to explore oh 
I'm super excited about it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this video as much as I enjoyed being here. I want to say I love you. I love you. Mwah. Regional Director, Madam Mary Osuefriye. We also have the Regional Health Director, Dr. Emmanuel Timkran with us. Doc, we acknowledge you if you are here. We have the representative of the Highways Authority, Mr. Samuel Osei Asamoa with us this morning. Also with us is the Urban Roads Regional Director, Engineer Francis Gambra. If you are here, we acknowledge you. With us is the MC for Asante Achim Central, who is Miss Honorable Robert Kwache. Honorable, if you are here, we acknowledge you. With us also is the MC for Asante Achim South, and also the Dean for MMDC is in Ashanti Region, and my brother, Mr. Alexander Frimpong. Honorable Alexander Frimpong. We have with us the Feeder Roads Regional Director, Mr. Justice Cranting. If you are here, we acknowledge you. With us also is the mayor of Kumase. You know him already, Honorable Samuel Pine. We acknowledge you, Honorable. We also have the regional coordinating director, Mrs. Emilia A. Botre. If you are here, we acknowledge you, Chief. And as I mentioned earlier, the regional minister responsible for Ashanti region, Honorable Simon Ose Mensa. So, ladies and gentlemen, I will now yield the podium to the Honorable Minister to take us through his substantive presentation, after which we will come to you for your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Deputy Minister. First of all, I bring you greetings from His Royal Majesty Otun Fosse to the second the chiefs and good people of the Ashanti region. And I'm here to present on behalf of the good people of Ashanti and the Regional Coordinating Council at this press briefing some of the significant strides that this government has made within the Ashanti region since 2017. Unfortunately for me, because of the size of the region and the number of districts that we have, I'm unable to touch all sectors. And I'm here to do three sectors, that is roads, health, and then education. Good. Good. Uh, Ashanti region has a land size of 24,389 square kilometers and it is centrally located. The population of the region as per the 2021 population and housing census is 5,404,463. It is the second most populous region. And even after the redemarcation of the new regions, it's now the largest region in terms of size. Previously, it was the northern region, but after Savannah and Northeast, we are taking off the northern region, Ashanti region, even in terms of landmark, is the largest. We have 43 district assemblies. The second to us, which is even Eastern region, has 33. Even for Eastern region, we beat them by 10 assemblies. Uh, we have one metropolitan assembly for which I have my mayor, Honorable Samuel Pan, with us. And then we have 19 municipal assemblies and 23 district assemblies. We have 47 constituencies out of the 275 constituencies of the country. This represents about 17% of the number of people in the House of Parliament. And if you take the assemblies, we have about 16.5 of them. 
We have major challenges as of 2017. When the president, Nana Dodankwe Kufuadu, graciously gave me the position to take care of the Ashanti region, I did a case reanalysis of the problems of the region. And most of, on top of the regions, we had very poor road network. That time, Ashanti region was second to central region in terms of west roads. And then the next area was health infrastructure within the region. Uh, the health infrastructure too, we were worse than any other region. That time it was 10 regions, but Shanti region was worse in terms of health infrastructure in relation to the population size. The other one was that we have several uncompleted health projects. Then security was also a challenge, sanitation was a challenge, educational infrastructure, especially after the introduction of the free SHS, realized that we had a huge deficit of uh, educational infrastructure. A case analysis of the challenges revealed that the topmost were in the areas of road, health, education, security, and sanitation. But if, for the purpose of this particular press briefing, I'm restricting myself to road, health, and then education. The road sector. Since 2017, the region has seen 336 separate road contracts with a total length of 6,498.75 kilometers. Out of those, 1,515.06 kilometers have been completed, representing about 23.3%. And the breakdown, we have the first table there for Department of Urban Roads. Department of Urban Roads has awarded 64 contracts. When it comes to the Ghana Highways Authority, they've also awarded 69 contracts. And then Federal Roads has the largest, which is about 203 contracts, all summing up to the figure of 336. One area people have been yearning for is the construction of interchanges in the Ashanti region. Just on the 28th of July last month, Parliament approved a loan facility of 140 million euros for the construction of the Swami interchange. Uh, besides that, let me explain some things or give additional information. The Sofo line interchange, which was started by former President Kofor's regime also had other interchanges included. One is the Bekwai runabout interchange. Uh, the other will be the G runabout overpass, which we also call interchange. So if the Sofo line interchange project is finally completed, then it means we have an interchange at Bekwai runabout and also an interchange at Konfano Chichitin Hospital runabout. I think he will show you some of the routes. We have so many. If you are talking about 1,515 kilometers, we cannot show everything. So we show you a few of them. But when I took over the affairs of Ashanti region, I sat down with the captains of the road sector in the region, and we strategized. The first thing we decided to do was to fix broken bridges. The roads were not very bad. But because the, uh, some bridges, major bridges, had collapsed, uh, the diversions were too long. So we decided that let's fix first the bridges for which the cost is quite low, and then make those roads more travel. So if you go to a report junction, there's a hotel we call Samad Hotel. There was a major bridge there. We fixed that one. We have Kordasso. We have a cream going to Bukrum area. There was another, another bridge there. On the uh, Udium Junction through Agomasu to uh, up, uh, Domiabra, we fixed two there. If you go to, there's a lady who had a restaurant, uh, that area, her name is Popra, uh, around Korda. So she also, her area, we fixed another bridge. We fixed several bridges to make sure that those roads became more travel. Then the next step 
was also to look at the main road leading to Kumasi. That's the major trunk road to Kumasi. That's the Accra Kumasi road. And the major challenge on that road, on the major challenges on the road were two. One, uh, you know, we had some runabouts which were um, very uncomfortable, which were very uncomfortable for motorists, especially uh, that created trucks. So we needed to redesign the four runabouts, the one at Jusso, the other at Ujum Junction, one at Bodhi Junction, and the other at Tech Police Station. Uh, after the redesigning of, the, of these runabouts, what we witnessed is that from that time, it has minimized the accident we, should, we used to have and the heavy traffic we, we used to have on that road. Again, be, be, between Tech Junction and Anraga Junction, uh, the place was highly deteriorated and we needed to fix that side. And then we had to look at the inner ring road. So we tackled between Anraga Junction and airport runabout, then between a, the airport runabout and then so I runabout. Thus, to minimize the traffic within these areas. Having done that, then we needed to look at all the other major entry points to Kumasi. So we first had a look at the Lake Road. So we awarded between Coca-Cola area, that's around Brewery area, to Dompasi Junction, to Chico, a Chinese company. Uh, that, that particular project had six components. Uh, the first component is the road itself that we needed to dualize. The second component is a bridge over River Susan. The third component, you know, those who know Kumasi very well, when you get to Kumasi South Hospital, we normally call it Atunzu Agogo Hospital, there was a, a lorry terminal there, and always there was heavy traffic. So we needed to relocate the terminal at Dumpasi Junction. So uh, that is the other component of the road. And then a two kilometer by 38 meters uh, storm drains. I think according to the captains of the industry, they are saying it's going to be the longest storm drain in West Africa. I don't know, but once they see, I carry the information they give me. Uh, that one is almost completed. Uh, we are left with just about 20 meters, uh, and that has not been done because the main bridge, we are now filling the banks. And when that is done, we then we will complete the construction of that site. And then downstream the, the river, we have one footpath for pedestrians and we have another bridge for vehicles. So these are the uh, six components of the road. The terminal is completed. The bridge is almost completed after they fill uh, the banks of, of the bridge. It, it means that it's completed. What will be left as standing is just about maximum less than 500 meters of the road to be dualized, and that project will be fully completed. Then having look at that, then we had to look at beyond the Dupasi Junction, which we also awarded in three phases. The first phase was about 8.8 .8 kilometers from Dupasi Junction to Apuchuja. Uh, one side is fully completed. Uh, the other side is about 75% complete. And that is to make sure that we take off the heavy traffic on that stretch of, of the road to leading to Kumasi. Then we move from there to the main Obwasi Road, and we needed to make two interventions. We realized from Kokobin to Anyankwanta, there's always heavy traffic. But from Anyankwanta to Obwasi was so bad that a uh, distance one could take just about 30 minutes to cover. It was taking people about two hours. And in order to avoid the bad road, people took the tour at Anyankwanta through Bekwai to Femena to Adansiasukwa before they would turn and go to, through Tutuka to, 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 to join Obwasi. So we realized that yes, there's heavy traffic at Kokobin area. But that portion of the road is better as compared from Anyankwanta to Obuasi. So we needed to fix the Anyankwanta to Obuasi. That one is almost fully completed. The major uh, aspect of that uh, project is construction of a bridge on river or that where the contractor has not started. But when it comes to the road itself, it's almost completed. Then from there, we realized that, yes, we are doing Anyankwanta to Obuasi. 
They are told the traffic at uh, Kokobin is very heavy. So what can we do? Then we say, let's get a critical link route. A critical link route can, that can take off some of the heavy traffic on the Kokobin portion to join trade. So we needed to construct uh, a hojo through Sokoban to trade. That one is also about 95% complete. We are left with just a, a short distance within Sokoban, which is, is, is 800 meters. Then that portion is also completed. We have challenges with the payment of compensation. And now we are, we are thinking around because after the first estimate was given to us, we realized that compensation payment alone is almost 15 million Ghana cities. And then the cost of fixing that length of about 800 meters is less than 6 million. So the question now is, do we do just slightly widened single lane through the, through the community and then save about for uh, eight, eight million to fix the Sokoban town route because that, that route, they've done all the drains, is left with good main surfacing. So this, this is the point that we are currently. Whether we do the demolition and pay the almost 15 million or we do a slightly widened single lane and then use the remaining amount to fix the Sokoban and the Daban town routes. Uh, when we were done with that one, then we needed to look at uh, the Sofu line interchange. So we needed to sit down with the contractors, that is China Jew, and then to see how we could uh, continue on with that project. That stalled from 2009. You know, that project was started by former President John Jukun Kufo's regime, but it stalled, there were no payments. And we had huge outstanding of interim payments of fees that had not been paid. And the worst aspect of that project is that the project is financially is in two components. One component is CD, the other component is dollar. And after every 90 days of issuance of an IPC, that is interim payment certificate, when it's not paid, the contractor will apply for interest on delayed payment. So whilst we're not continuing with the project, we were still paying interest on outstanding IPCs. And then when you look at the dollar component, which is tied to the, the performance of the city. As the city depreciates, we needed to cough more cities to go and make payment for that dollar aspect. So we made huge debt and we needed to sit down and negotiate. Initially, we thought we could pay something small for them to get back to site. The minister helped us, the minister for rules and highways, and paid 50 million. After the payment of the 50 million, they said no. This is just a drop in the ocean. Then uh, he assisted us with another 50 million. They said, no, we are not going. So we needed to sit down with them and come out with a financial arrangement, which made them go back to site. Uh, we are left with less than 500 meters to complete that particular project. Uh, but now we had some financial challenges again. Fortunately, we needed to look at the financing arrangement. So one of the recent loans that was approved by Parliament, that is 750 million. There's a component that is going to go to uh, China Jew to complete th th that portion of the route. Uh, for now, I think that is all that I will say about the route network. Uh, do I complete everything before I take questions? Okay. Now let me move on to the health sector. Uh, first of all, I'll start with competition in the health sector. If you remember in 2011, the then government, uh, the NDC government introduced captation in the health sector only to the, to the Ashanti region. Out of the 10 regions, it was only in the Ashanti region that uh, the captation in the health sector was introduced. It was expected to be piloted for just six months. Unfortunately, for six years plus, we were still in that uh, captation policy. Uh, we had several demonstrations that their policy must be abolished. Nothing happened to the policy until the new, uh, new, new patriotic party regime came led by Nanado Danko Ekufuado. And within the first six months, or even less than six months, uh, then the policy was abolished. We told them that, uh, yes, Mr. President, we are Shantis, we are not greedy. 
uh, we are very hospitable. We are prepared to share. So if the captation is good for Ashanti, then it must be ruled to all the remaining nine regions so that we all share. But if it cannot be ruled to the remaining nine regions, then I don't think that Ashanti region, we can also take the captation. It was abolished and it, it gave us a good sign of relief in the health sector. People were dying because, for instance, my hometown from Jachi, which is just about 12 kilometers away from Kumasi, and if I, I, select, I select a health facility in, let's say, Bosomchi, that is St. Michael's, which is less than a kilometer to my hometown, and I come to Kumasi and I fall, uh, I fall sick, there's no way I can go to Konfuanochi, uh, which was a very bad policy. And so people were just dying, those who could not afford to pay. And then, so the, the, this policy, this killer policy, that was removed by the president, the people of Ashanti region, we are very grateful to him. Now, let's move on to human resources. The table is there, but I'll try to do a quick summary. In 2016, doctors in Ashanti region were 113. As we speak, we have 218 an increase of 105, representing about 93% increase. Uh, let me pick another one, nurses. Of late, I think the issue of nurses are, have come to the floor, so let me pick them as one of the examples. In 2016, we have 5,936 nurses in the Ashanti region. As we speak, we have 9,645, an increase of 3,709 representing about 62% increase. Let's move on to midwives. We had 1,131, now we have 3,114. Uh, difference of 1,983, representing 175%. Then you move on to pharmacists, we had 95, now we have 135, an increase of 40 pharmacists, representing about uh, 50 something percent. Then the other one is for physician medical assistance. Physician medical assistance. We have 220, now we have 288, an increase of 68. Then biomedical scientists, we have 59, now we have 131, an increase of 122. But if you take the total staffing, the total staffing asset. 2016 was 10,331. Now we have 16,845, an increase of 6,614, which is very significant, about 65% increase. Uh, when we come to the indicators, you realize that when we were the worst region in terms of health facilities, now the situation has, has significantly changed. And most of the indicators that we had fallen short of the, of the target. Now most of them, we are within comfort levels within the target. And I'll give you first one. Doctor to population ratio, 2016, it was one is to 13,798. That meant that uh, at that time, one doctor was to see 13,798 patients. As we speak, We've come down to one is to 5,529, but the target is one is to 7,500. So if you look at this, it means we are comfortably within the target, far below the 7,500 that we are supposed to achieve. Let's move on to the next one. Next to population ratio, it was one is to 945. As we speak, it's one is to 387. The target is one is to 450. We are comfortably also within this target level. So there's significant improvement in the health sector now, since 2017. You move on to midwife to women in fertility age, population ratio. In 2016, it was one is to 1,151. As we speak, it's one is to seven, one is to two, six, seven, which means that we are far, far below the target uh, of one is to 700. That is the ideal situation 
is one is to seven hundred, but now we are far below one is to two hundred and sixty seven. Within all the areas, there's significant improvement. Now we have health infra infrastructure. I think this has been on the air with for a long time since 2017 that some health facilities that were ongoing have been abandoned. And the reality is what we are going to see now. First, ongoing infrastructure as at January 2017. There was one facility at Formina with this back from uh, the late Kutue Champon regime. And regimes have come, regimes have gone. It, 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 it has not been completed. But I can assure you that latest by the end of September, I know if everything works well, the president might be in a Shantri regime for his tour, maybe in October, and it will be one of the projects that will be commissioned in the Ashanti region. So now it's 99%. There are only few things left about the landscaping, and after that, this project will be completed. People were talking so much about it, but there was challenge in the financial arrangement. The same thing applies to Kumewu. It's the same, similar financial arrangement for the Kumewu District Hospital. But now that the government has resolved, everything is moving on smoothly. So the Formina Hospital, which has been on the drawing board for f over 40 years or so, will be commissioned this year, God willing. Then Bekwai. This also started during uh, Kutue Champon's regime. And there have been so many talk about this hospital. Various government have come and gone. Some did something on them. Others abandoned them completely. But I'm glad to tell you that in December, uh, November 2020, the president commissioned that hospital, and that hospital is functional. Then you come to Tepa Hospital. That was another issue. Even when the president commissioned the hospital, uh, people started saying that, yes, they commissioned the hospital, the hospital is not completed. You know, sometimes when you occupy certain positions, gradually you begin to learn so many things. Uh, it was there I, I was informed that the commissioning of the project does not necessarily mean the next day the hospital is receiving patients. They will have to train the health staff on the new equipments, test run the equipment before they can start introducing them department by department. You don't move the whole hospital at a go, but maybe you move outpatients, later you can move uh, what we call maybe female ward or male ward, and then gradually the surgery, everything will move and then until the last batch of the team is moved to that hospital. That hospital is also now functional and is receiving patients for the past one and a half years. Then you come to Sechre Kumewu. Sechre Kumewu, the last time I visited the place, which is about some three weeks, one month ago, uh, they told me by December and then, all the civil works will be completed. And then between January 2023 and April 2023, then they will install all the necessary equipment. So hopefully by mid-year, 2023, if everything goes on as scheduled, that hospital will also be commissioned. So the March talk about Kumewu Hospital, uh, there will not be any further discussion on the completion. If there will be any discussion, it will be the operationalization of the hospital and how it's functioning. The next one is Seria Regional Hospital. You know, originally this hospital was supposed to be sited at uh, Kumasi South Hospital, what many people call Atosu Agogo Hospital. Currently, that is expected to be the regional hospital of Ashanti, but it has, hasn't got facilities that qualify it even to be a district hospital. I'm telling you, there are many hospitals in this country we call district hospital that don't qualify to be called district hospital. Because you don't just call a hospital district hospital for... Fortunately, the regional director of health services is here. If the need arises, maybe you come and explain what and what makes a particular hospital, a district hospital, or a regional hospital. It's just like putting up a building and you see you are using it as a hotel. You cannot just jump and say this is three star, this is four star, this is five star. You have what and what should go into that hotel facility before it can be qualified as 
a five star, four star, or three star hotel. And I'm telling you, if you do cursory analysis of most of the hospitals in this country, which we call district hospitals, municipal hospitals, regional hospitals, they don't qualify because we don't have most of the things that will make them district or regional hospitals. So the Sevilla Hospital, which is uh, 250 beds, is about 98% complete. When you go there now, all the equipments have been fixed. The internal rules have been done. Uh, they are left with small things about landscaping and tidying up some few knots. Me, when you even they told me it's 98%, I was doubting because I think it's a hospital in itself now. Uh, this one too, the only challenge which is not directly related to that project is the power. The transformer there is not enough to support the equipment in the hospital. So now they've requested for a substation, ECG substation. Uh, we did a similar thing when we get to Afari. Afari too, when they tested the equipment, they realized that the transformer was not strong enough to support the equipment. So they requested for ECG substation, which we've constructed a very nice ECG substation for them. And that is a similar thing we are going to do for Sevilla, so that we don't have frequent breakdown of the new equipment that have been installed. But this one too, I'm sure God willing, uh, by the year end, we should be able to complete, uh, commission it. Asantia Chim Centra is completed, is awaiting commissioning. <clears throat> what has delayed us a bit is that the access road, we need to boot men's office. And uh, we are sure that uh, by the end of September, uh, we should have the boot men's office done. And if the president should visit the region during his tour in October, this particular project will also be complete, uh, will be commissioned. So you see the pictures there, the Bakupai Municipal Hospital is there, the Hafwa no Municipal Hospital is there. You can see the Santia Chim Central. You can see the Afari Hospital, which is a military hospital. Uh, the Afari Hospital is a 500-bed capacity hospital. And uh, that one is also about 97%. Now, maternity and children's health facility. An AIDS media person or journalist, Seth Kwame Watin, if you all remember, did a documentary at Konfanochi Teaching Hospital where we have newborn babies, about six of them in a single unit, five in a single unit, which was risky for the children because they could be infected by diseases if one of, or two of them had any disease, which is, which is infectious. Uh, on hearing this, the First Lady, Her Excellency Rebecca Akufuado, came to the aid of the people of Ashanti region, specifically Confanochi Teaching Hospital, and put up the edifice that we are see, uh, seeing. That she constructed a new maternity mother baby unit and pediatric intensive care unit. In all, uh, it has about 59 beds. That is the mother baby unit, 30. The maternity unit initially it started with 20, but later they, they realized they could expand the number of beds by five. So that came to about 25 beds. And then the ICU, that is the pediatric intensive care unit, also has four. So in all, it's a 59-bed capacity hospital. And state of the art, if you enter, you have state of the art equipment in that hospital. Uh, on behalf of the people of Ashanti region and the chiefs, I'm very grateful to the First Lady, Her Excellency Rebecca Akufuado, for this guest. Uh, and I'm also grateful to the AIDS journalist, Seth Kwame Boatin, for also doing that documentary. Maybe if he had not done that documentary, nobody would have seen that canker that was going on at Confanochi Teaching Hospital. Now, so you, you can see the next one is the maternity and children's block at Confanochi Teaching Hospital. Uh, you may re recall that about two, three years ago, the president and Otumfo went to cut the sword for the construction or reconstruction of the old 
maternity and children's block. But there was a need to do integrity tests of the building. And after the completion of the integrity test, it failed that uh, if you should complete that building as it was or try to do reinforcement, there was the danger that after installation of equipments which are very heavy, that building could collapse. So the whole old building we started during Kutue Champo's time. I don't know, I'm sure he was very much interested in health facilities. Uh, we had to bring the whole structure down and construct a new hospital. So the whole floor for the main building is completed, that the civil works is completed. Uh, alongside, it's not coming out clearly, they've now started the outpatient structure. If you go into the building now, they are laying the cables uh, for the gases, uh, the wires for ECG and all those things. They are now doing those internal ones. So that is the structure you see there. That is over in the, uh, 503 capacity building. Then let me come to infectious diseases and containment centers projects. You know, the COVID pandemic exposed this country in terms of the adequacy of health facilities within the country. Uh, we had to rent several places, hotels, uh, some private facilities to keep those who were infected with COVID and how to be treated inward or in the centers. Now, on realizing this, we see that uh, we didn't have any good infectious disease center. So the agreement was that, fine, Kumasi South, which is now the regional hospital, we should have one there because that was the treatment center we selected for the COVID during the peak of the COVID. So we, we are constructing one there. And because the regional hospital is now moving from uh, Kumasi South to Sewia, we realize that then we have to put one also close to the Sevilla Regional Hospital so that in case of such emergencies, then the people could be kept there or the people could be treated there. So we have these two. The square one is about 90% complete, and then that of Sevilla is also about 93% complete. Then we have district polyclinics projects. One is at, at Tumakwa Angoma, that is at the capital Chedia, is about 15% complete. We have Swami, which is also about 25%. Amansia West, about 20%. Sechra Franklin at Drobonso, which is 20%. And Ahafuano Southeast, which is also around 20%. Then we have Ajeda 11 projects. Uh, the region, we were lucky, and we had uh, about 14 of them. Now, we have a Chuma Kwaguma, which is a trader. That was where the sword was cut by His Excellency the President. That one is about 40% now. Then a Chuma Wabieja North, and that is at the capital of that district, which is Barakesi, that's about 23%. We have Obuasi, that is the trauma and accident center at Bidimu, and that one is about 30%. Bosome Frehon, we have one at Asiwa, which is about 20%. Amansia South is about 15%. Uh, the one which has not started yet is the one at Asokoremampo. In fact, the site that they got, the consultant went there and they said that site is not suitable. Fortunately for us, a new site has been identified within the airport enclave, and Ghana Civil Aviation has given us the authority that we can use that site. So that is where we are now going to construct the Asokore Mampo Municipal Agenda 11 facility. Then we have uh, Achuman Punia, which is also about 20%. We have Uforikro Municipal, which is about 30%. Uh, I, I, I have to pause a little and congratulate my special assistant who used to be the municipal chief executive for Fofori Chrome, the way we fought to get them the uh, Agenda 11 project, which is now at Kokobin, and is at 30%. Uh, we have such a central in Suta, that is in Suta Kwamambi Postal Area, which is 15. 
I have for Anos Southwest, that is Mankransu area, but it's at Kunsu, which is 10%. Uh, I have for Anos Southeast, they couldn't give the percentage, but what we witnessed was that uh, they are now building the construction site office and they are molding blocks. That is the stage at which it is. Both Evija Kwabri South and Evija Kwabri North are all at substructure levels. Now, there's one important thing. Uh, sometimes we politicians, we make mockery of some things and it turns out to be serious joke. Uh, there's the Zip Line Drone Center at Mpenya. You may recall that Ashanti region had a second of this facility. And uh, the facility as a, is at a community called Mpenya, which is within the Mampon Municipal Assembly. Uh, the, this facility serves four regions. That is Ashanti, Ahafo, Bruno East, and Eastern region. Uh, the, there are 30, 28 districts in Ashanti that are served by this facility. And then Ahafo 2, Bruno East 4, and then Eastern region 1. The total number of facilities served directly, that is health facilities, where they deliver some of these uh, medicines are 328 and you have 274 in Ashanti, 18 in Ahafu, Bono East 31 and Eastern Region 5. Between October 2019 when it was commissioned up to December 2029, they sent, they, they, they made deliveries of 461. Between, in 2020, they made deliveries of 11,274 and 2021 deliveries of 21,399. And then this year so far, they've made 11,093 deliveries to various centers. Now, the total products delivered, the figures I gave earlier are the deliveries, like they go one round and come back. Those are the deliveries, but the quantity of products that are delivered is what I'm going to give now. Between October 2019 and December 2019, they delivered products of 2,564. 2020, they delivered 78,132. 2021, 312,323. 2022, when the year has not even ended, we have more than a quarter to end. They delivered 329,133. And the picture there is the drone center at Mpenya. What you, the next picture you see is a drone ready to set out and go and make delivery. Now, I move on to the National Ambulance Service. We are grateful to the president for supplying every district every uh, constituency, sorry, with an ambulance. Fortunately for us, you know, Ashanti region, we have 47 constituencies, so each constituency had an ambulance, making 47. And because there's an airport there, one is also stationed at the airport in situations of an emergency. And then we have another one stationed at Confanochi, which is the uh, teaching hospital within the region. And it's not serving only Ashanti region, it's serving almost the whole Middle Belt. So we have another ambulance there. So we had 49 ambulances in the region. Now we also have paramedic and emergency care training school at Nkinkansu. That is where they train uh, those people who are under the National Ambulance Service. So you can see the picture there, that is the paramedic and emergency care training school at Nkinkansu. Now we move on to COVID-19, uh, not boy too much, but the figures are there, you can see for yourself. Uh, fortunately, um, uh, I won't say fortunate or fortunately, we have the active cases we have now is 94, uh, and none of, them have, none of them is under intensive care. You realize that uh, cases at treatment centers, zero, do severe zero, moderate zero, mild zero, critical zero. So more or less, they have the virus, but uh, maybe if you meet them, there's no sign to show that even they are, they are sick. So that is the positive aspect we have. 
Then we have uh, the target population, which is about 3.5 million. And those fully vaccinated, we have 1,220,936. Then those who, are, who have received a single, at least a single dose, 1,961. And then those, those who received is 4,119,386. Those who's used, we have, uh, sorry, expired. You know, some people are not going for the vaccination. I don't know. Now they think uh, the pandemic is no more there, but it's still there. So I'm urging all those within Ashanti Ridge, not only Ashanti Ridge, the whole country. Uh, those who have not gone for the vaccination, it's better they go for the vaccination, at least when you are attacked by the virus. It will not be devastating as if not taking the, the dose. So they should go and take the dose. Uh, I think these are the, another disease that we had was the monkeypox. Uh, 16 cases were identified in the region. Uh, fortunately, uh, when they checked, they tested only one person confirmed positive, and that person has almost even recovered. There was an influenza in schools, which also became another topic in the media. Uh, total of 87 cases reported among 1,162 students. Uh, some 20, 20 of them tested positive, but there's no mortality recorded. There's nobody died of it. And all the cases that were identified, everybody has recovered and it's a positive news for all of us. I'm great, grateful to the workers of the Ghana Health Services. Again, the, the government supplied pickups to all the districts or assemblies in the region, except such a central that did not receive theirs. We will find out, we will trace and find out why they did not receive. But the remaining 42, they all had their pickups. So that is the total that was supplied to them. Now I'll move on to education. Number of schools and enrollment, that is 2021, 2022. At KG, the number of schools, 2,439. And enrollment for 2021, 2022 is 1,97667. Then primary number of schools, 2,516. And then Roman 540033. GHS number of schools 2061. And then Roman 279,968. Senior high schools, we have 140 senior high schools in the region. And the total enrollment is 298651. That's enrollment for 2021-2022 uh, academic year. We have special schools, that is three, and the people there are 921. In all, we have 7,159 uh, educational facilities within the region, excluding private schools. What I'm talking about are only public schools. These figures I'm quoting all exclude private schools, it's strictly public schools. And enrollment. As at now, that is from KG up to SHS, we have 1,317,240. Now, free SHS, here I'm looking at the trend. We are doing comparative analysis of enrollment from 2016 up to 2021. The total enrollment in 2016, both girls and boys, was 67,120. It moved, after the introduction of the free SHS, increased by 23.6%, almost 24%, a move from 67 to 82,984. Then 2018, 2019, there was a significant jump. That was the second year, so people had now come to understand the free SHS policy and had realized that it was a reality, uh, not just a mirage. So it increased by 26.8% to 105,228. 2019-2020, I don't know whatever happened. 
I tried to get explanation, I still don't have it. It declined from 105,228 to 98,309. Even though I've not had any official explanation, but from my own point of view, I think, you know, during the second year, when people appreciated the policy, those who were in the house, they all rushed to senior high school. So we didn't have many people who were in the house previously that were joining. That might have been the, the reason. But so far, if I tell you I have official reason to that, it's, it's not true. But what I've said, just said is my own thinking. Then in 2020, 2021, we have 101,857. Uh, sorry, uh, 101,074. In 2021, 2022, we had 109,857. Uh, you can see the significant jump from 67,000 to 109,000 plus. That is over about 64% increase. So it means that Shanti region, looking at the numbers, 140 schools, it means that we are one of the major beneficiaries of the president's uh, free SHS policy. And I'm always glad that uh, he introduced this policy. Somebody like me who is suffered before entering uh, secondary school then. I passed common trans from form one to form four because my father was diseased. I couldn't get anybody to take me to secondary school. Even the school I passed, I couldn't go. My uncle, my late uncle borrowed 40 CDs before I could attend Dachi Pram, so because I'm from Dachi and the school is in my hometown, borrowed 40 CDs before I could enter senior high school. So when I hear people joking about this, I want to weep. They don't know. They've never been affected by such a situation. If they had, they would be talking positive about the free SHS. Now, uh, because people have been complaining about the food staff, I won't say that uh, the schools are getting all that they have but at least some releases have been made, and I'll concentrate only on July and then August. Uh, buffer stock releases, and that is on 21st July, they received maize 1,689 bags, flour 1,544 bags, sugar 788 bags, sardine 1,164 boxes, Mackerel, they say 3,234 boxes. Palm oil, that is 482 uh, gallons. Is it gallons? Gallons. And then we have vegetable oil, 1,615. Uh, that particular supply, there was no margarine. On 15th August, we had 1,700 bags of maize, 1,550 bags of flour, 800 of sugar. 1,200 sardine, 3,300 mackerel, palm oil, 500, and then margarine, 1,000. So it means that uh, I agree that there are some difficulties and nobody will dispute that. But in the midst of all these challenges, in the midst of all these economic difficulties, still some releases are being made. Then projects awarded between 2017 and 2022. That is the basic and SHS. KG 134, primary 266, GHS 242, and SHS 328, making a total of 970 projects. Those that have been completed, we have 41 for KG, 89 for primary, 73 for GHS, 124 for SHS. And those we are saying all types of projects. Some could be kitchen for KGs. Some could be dormitories for SHS. Some be six unit classroom block for a primary school or 12 unit classroom block for a primary school, a, a dining hall for SHS, assembly hall for SHS. So all types, that is, we've not uh, segregated or not given the breakdown of the composition, but we are talking about all projects. So 327 have been completed. And then those ongoing, we have 393. Those that are stalled, we have 250 that are stalled. We now move on to STEM and TVET, or TVET and STEM. We have three main uh, STEM projects. I'm even told there's a fourth one which I've not captured. 
which is at Jachi, still in the Bosom Ching district. The Creative Art School in Kodaso, that is going to be the first of its kind in this country. The first time we are going to have a Creative Art Senior High School in the country. And that is being constructed at Kodaso. I think uh, they will show you the picture, the area view of the project. Then we have Bosom Ching Girls, which is also a STEM school. That one, even, uh, it made its first admission last academic year. So we have students in that school. And then we have J.A. Kofor Senior High Technical School that also has advanced. Uh, the project is about 75% complete. Some of the facilities are complete, the others are different levels of completion. But we, in all, it's over 75% complete. Now, TVET. Uh, we have 19 schools and there are various uh, projects ongoing in those schools. Uh, the lists of the 19 are there. I don't want to take too much of your time because of time constraints. Vehicles that have been supplied to the educational sector. There's one Land Cruiser, 88 buses, 169 pickups, and 299 motorbikes. So in all, we are talking about 557 vehicles. That is motorbikes, pickups, uh, buses, and a land cruiser. These are some of the things we supplied to the educational sector to make them mobile, uh, so that those who are supposed also to go around and check the activities or the performance of the teachers in various schools, uh, they could use motorbikes, especially in areas very difficult, that, that are very difficult, the difficult terrain, they can use the motorbikes and others, and they can use the pickups for most of the official duties at the office and whatever they have to do with town, and sometimes also go on monitoring and supervision. Apart from this, there are some legacy projects. Uh, we have the airport expansion project. They projected to complete by the end of this month, but my last visit, I doubt they can do it. Maybe we'll look at somewhere in October. But whatever the situation is, this project will be completed by the end of this year. And we start receiving uh, international flights. That is where we will talk about Kumasi International Airport, not airport by nomenclature. Just changing a signboard and putting international airport there as an airport. This is rare airport that will receive international flights and that will meet international standards. The mayor is here. It's in his jurisdiction, but there's a caveat. There's another municipal chief executive. Municipal chief executive of Asokore Mampong. Honorable Kwesi Mumuni can come. He also claims that uh, it's, for, it's for him. So he calls his municipality airport municipality. Then mayor will also say that then go and take Kumasi International Airport to so Asokori Mampo International Airport. So this argument, I want to take myself out of it. <laughs> so then we have, you know, this is the first time I've seen this in this country. And many people are not aware of it. We have accommodation for the judiciary. We have four bedroom flats for a peace called judges in Kumasi, it just, it just shares boundary with the Regional Coordinating Council, where my office is. And this is the stage that the project has reached. Uh, the contractor has been very fast. Uh, it's just about one year or one year, three months. And he's ahead of the projected time of completion. You have the 20 plus uh, outer houses, outer house maybe for support uh, staff or something. And then they have some ancillary facilities, tennis court, swimming pools, uh, mess, or office for a place where they can relax. Yes, uh, all of them are included in this particular project. Besides this one, which is for the appeal court judges, which are 20 different separate blocks accommodation, we have other 12 flats. There are two blocks of flats. Each of them has six for lower level staff of judiciary. That is, the picture is not here. So this is also a landmark 
or a legacy project that this government can leave for the people of the Ashanti region. What you are seeing is, the next one is KJTR Central Market Phase 2 project. If we can do any proper decongestion in Kumasi, it's this project that is going to solve it. I've said it time and time again, I'll say it even during my last virtue, several questions were fired fired at me on this. I say most of the problems we witness, the conjunction we are seeing in central business district area in Kumasi is the result of the construction of first phase of that project. You see, when you are doing project, you have to analyze what we want to achieve at the end of the project. KJTR, anybody who have lived in Kumasi before, KJTR was a lorry terminal to support central market. So if you want to change the functionality of that particular facility, then there should be an alternative facility to, to, to take that, that function. This one did not do that. If you go into the records before the commencement of the project in 2015, over 1,000 vehicles, commercial vehicles, were parking at KGTR terminal. The new project made provision of about, only, not about, this one is not about, only 108 maximum parking lots. You throw more than 900 vehicles outside there, where do they go to park? Without providing an alternative lorry terminal, whether temporary or permanent. That is why we see what we are seeing. So if you go to Kumasi now, any runabout has been turned into a lorry terminal. When I came in 2017, I started driving them away. And later, I reflected, because any time I drove them away, they came back. I reflected and realized that, ah, where, are they, where do I drive them to? I have not provided an alternative parking lot for them. So you drive them, they will have to eat, so they will come back. So now what we are doing is we are only trying to manage them. The second problem, apart from the commercial vehicles, you built more than 8,000 shops. No lorry park. Even if just 5% of the 8,000 of them have vehicles. You're talking about 400 vehicles. Where do they park? And I still stand by it. The congestion we are having in Central Business District is the poor implementation of the first one of the project. Then I'm going there to patronize the shops. I have a vehicle, where do I park? There's not an alternative parking space. And that is what I've said, and I'll say it anywhere I stand, even at gunpoint, that that project is like a beautiful box, smelled with gold, but when you open it, it's dirty. The content is dirty. So when we came, we had to sit down with the consultant and the contractor and look at how we can solve the problem with these second fees. So what we've done now is that the whole ground floor will be lorry park of the project. The whole ground floor will be lorry park. The first floor will be meant for traditional market. My grandmother will not go and sell plantain in a shop a lockable shop. You see, when you are, you are undertaking a project, you are doing the project to change the lifestyle of the people. But you, you don't do a project that is totally disjointed with the environment. So now we are going to provide more tabletops. So if you, say, you are selling pepper, instead of form formally selling it on the ground on maybe a sack, spread on the ground or selling it on a table, wooden table, we are going to design concrete tables where they can sell them. And even where necessary, you ask those who sell something like fish, meat, uh, other things that attract fries, to have a sieve on top so that if somebody is coming to buy, you open, you serve the person, then you cruise to avoid having uh, 
flies scattered all over the food and we go back and eat. So this one, we are making sure is going to solve some of the problem. Again, I will, I will commend the mayor. Uh, when he took over, you know, we've advised all the MMDCs that between February and March ending, all the major drains must be desilted. We need to desilt all the major drains before the onset of the rain. He did it this year. You do hear any flooding around the central business area. But if you are not done, there will have been a repeat of what happened last year. So this new one, we are doing a bigger drain around the whole market. As a collector drain. I don't know whether that's how it's called. Collector drain. Yes. That will collect all the uh, rain runoffs and then take it straight into the main Susan drain so that we will avoid flooding. So this is a project that is dear to my heart. If you are not going to complete this project, you can shout at the mayor one million times. You can shout at the regional minister several times to be difficult. Take a small company, I don't say a small company, a private company, like VIP. They know where their parking space a central market, a uh, market area is very small. And because of that, they have a holding bay around a place called Abinchi. So always they have maximum two vehicles parking. The one that is loading and the one that has come to offload. Maximum two. So when they try this one, if it's one of the KJTR Central Market Project. They should have been a holding bay. Because every station is taking, they have 54 stations. Each is taking maximum of two vehicles. The one that is loading and the one that has come to offload. But because there was no holding bay, they have to park anywhere. VIP did it. So you will never find congestion around the VIP uh, loading station at Asafu Market. So you come offload, you drive to the holding bay. When it's your time, they give you a call, you come and loot. And that is what should have been done. But Penifosi, Yedijawa, and Yediaswa, Yediaswa will do it under phase two and solve the problem and make sure that the congestion at the central business district area if not removed in this entirely, because it's not easy to solve every problem 100%, it will minim be minimized to the barest minimum for people to have the freedom and comfort to move around central business district area of Kumasi. The other one is Akumadan Greenhouse. Uh, it's a delight to watch. They produce vegetables. Uh, they have their hostel there, and they do their training. There's a school attached, and they do this in-house. Uh, greenhouse production. They produce tomatoes, pepper, beans, etc. And uh, that is one of the legacy projects that uh, this government has given to Ashanti region. Uh, to end it all, I'll say as much as I admit that the government has not been able to break the gap between the regional expectation of infrastructure development and actual delivery, I'm um, of the strongest conviction that the MPP government has not performed badly in terms of provision of development facilities in the Ashanti region. Even taking the, these three sectors alone as an example, you realize that the government has not done badly at all. But for the global economic crisis, which has had a devastating economic effect on the country, most of these projects who have been completed. That's bridging significantly the gap between actual and expected levels of development. At this point, I wish to express the appreciation of the government to the chiefs and people of Ashanti region for the patience they've demonstrated so far. We also thank the Ministry of Formation for offering us such an important platform 
But I have one request to make. Subsequently, such press briefing must be done at the regional capitals of the various regions so that our media people can also participate. Additionally, I take the opportunity to express our profound appreciation to His Excellency, the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Dudankwe Kufuado, and the entire government machinery for the effort to improve the development of the Ashanti region. I'm optimistic that with God on our side, the economy of our dear country shall bounce back stronger. In that light, we shall see light. Ashanti will see light. Thank you, and may the almighty God bless us all. Thanks. Thank you so much for the insightful presentation, Honorable Minister. It was so masterfully delivered. I was like, should we even take questions? But because it's a press briefing, it has to be done. But seriously, uh, my point is that after this presentation, it doesn't matter if you are an NPP communicator or anyone. If you had the benefit to witness what the Honorable Minister has taken us through, let no one deceive you on so many things, but especially on these three things. If anyone tells you that the President Nanado Danko Akufuado led government has abandoned some legacy projects in the bush, it's a lie. It is not true. You heard the minister, you saw the pictures. Facts don't lie. If they talk about Syria Hospital, Afari Military Hospital, the Aerojet projects, Ahafuano, you've seen the projects. These are hard facts. Let no one deceive you. On another issue, people talk about roads and say they haven't seen any roads. I don't think the record which shows that over 6,498 kilometers of roads which have been started in Ashanti region, out of which 1,515 kilometers are completed, is a reflection that we've not done any road in Ashanti region. If anybody challenges you on that fact, you can go out there and let them know that the Honorable Minister said they should drive to Dompasi Junction. They should go to the Anita Hotel Jabin Road. They should go to the Tanosu Ebuakwa Road. They should go to the Anyan Kwanta Obwasi Road, Bantama and Bushen Road, Ahunjo Sokobin to Trede Road, South Suntreso to Patase, Asu Ebuakwa Road, Squadasu Road, among so many others that the Honorable Minister was able to show here. So please, let no one deceive you that government is not committed to road infrastructure in any part of the country and not Ashanti region. Please, those, these are the facts that the minister has put before us. Also, there are so many people spreading misinformation that the Agenda 111 hospital projects will never start. They are nowhere to be found, at least from what I heard the minister say and what I was able to put together quickly, not even all he mentioned, but the few that caught my attention is the fact that if you go to Ashanti region today and you want to see Agenda 111 hospital projects, go to Trede, go to Barakese, go to Edubia, go to Aso uh, Ninahin, go to Kokobin, Nsuta, Kunsu, Adujama, you will see that they have started these projects on the ground. And so be catcher or say projects now a beer can room at on soon me pamucho and yano cray and a minister and so so the afternoon. So on this note, uh, we will take just one set of questions because the presentation was quite comprehensive and I think the honorable minister has covered almost everything but for the purposes of clarification. If you have any question kindly show by hand they will bring the microphone to you. David will bring the microphone to you. You mention your name and media house and proceed to ask your question. Right. Thank you very much. My name is Obed. I report for GH1 TV. And our minister, um, last week, um, a research outfit came out with a report that suggests that the Ashanti region um, is the region that's recorded the highest number of violent cases. I don't know if you've cited a report. Violence. What, vi yes, 
Okay. Yes. I, I don't know if you've cited it, but what is your reaction on it, especially on the backdrop of the KNUST um, um, saga between the two of us? Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for the question. Uh, my my question segues into what he said. Uh, so the Ashanti region in recent years your name, has... Your name and media okay. house for the benefit yes. of My the name is Selom and I work with the final newspaper. Uh, yeah, so over the last uh, few years, the Ashanti region has developed a reputation for having the, the, the worst numbers when it comes to negative news. For example, murders in Ghana, Ashanti region leads. Teenage pregnancies in Ghana, Ashanti region leads. Um, number of persons living with HIV in Ghana, Ashanti region leads. Accident numbers, Ashanti region leads. So, and like he said, uh, just last week, another research came out which says that Ashanti region leads in the, uh, the number of recorded violent incidents. And some of these I have worked on personally. These stories I have worked on personally. So, are you aware of this negativity and general? crime tendency, which the Ashanti region is noted for, and what are you going to do about it? Thank you for the question, please. I think I saw one hand there, okay. Um, my name is Charles. I work with City FM, City TV. Um, Honorable, uh, the president recently, um, or even before now, mentioned that he was prepared to put his presidency on the line to fight in Galamsey. Um, in the Ashanti region, there are reports that Galamse has returned and it's destroying the water bodies in the region. Recently, Odike was on radio and he was criticizing chiefs for not helping in fighting um, the menace. What are you doing as chairman of RECSEC to fix the situation in your region? And also, I want to ask you a question about what happened with um, Chairman Sabonsu in his constituency. Um, he's an experienced politician. I want to find out if he feels that, if he's not worried, that one day the people of Ashanti region who seem to be very calm and collected, if they did this to a stalwart like uh, Tim and Sabuntu, one day he will find a mob in his office like the one that happened in Sri Lanka. That's a personal question that I want to ask him. Okay, so. We'll take the last two, and then that, that will be it. Yes, uh, good morning, Honorable Minister. Uh, my name is Nana Poku from Daily Searchlight. Um, I saw a video going around, and some group of people in Ashanti region saying that the region has been uh, abandoned, and that when the elections come 2024, they are not going to vote for the party, I mean the MPP. And Odeke is also on record to have said that, yes, the Ashanti region has been um, abandoned by the current government. So when we hear these things, what is your take on it? Uh, is it true that Apanshan region has been abandoned? Uh, but listen to our record, I don't know whether that is a political gimmick or it's a truism. Thank you. So we take the last question from the back. Good morning, my name is Noble. I work with um, TV3. Uh, these are what I would like to find out. The the general atmosphere of people in the Ashanti region, does it not look like they are turning against, you know, the, the MPP? So they're turning against their own people. But case in question, MP4 Achiman Wabiaja South, um, he was yesterday attacked by his constituents because of poor roads. Uh, the Kwabri chief and people, they are not happy. Uh, Barakesi chief was attacked during the, during the weekend. My next one is the Sewa um, Regional Hospital. Is it the case that it is complete or it is 98% complete? The, original, the health minister said that the facility was complete. We're waiting for some electricity connection and I want to ask about the roads leading to the place. Is it complete or it is 98% complete? The, the health minister said it was complete. Thank you. Thank you for the question. We take that to be the last question. So I will invite the Honorable Minister for his responses and also his closing remarks. Thank you very much, all those who posed the questions. 
one uh, Obed from is it GH one? Yeah. Uh, he has about the balance cases in the Ashanti region being the highest. Uh, I have not read that from any newspaper. But what I'll say is that, first of all, I'm grateful to members of the Regional Security Council. All the major security challenges that we inherited and those that have come our way, we've been able to solve all of them. And I'll go through some few. If you take Asante Achimabugo, Kato has many minutes that have been there for decades. And even the late former president, Jerry John Rawlings, established Operation Calm Life in 1992 in this country to curb that menace. When I took over in 2017, I went to Agogo, which is the capital of Asante Achim Central, sorry, North, and had a meeting with the chiefs and the people in the church and told them that we would nip that menace in the bed. Now, everybody can attest to the fact that that menace has brought down to the barest minimum. And you hardly hear since 2018, we started in 2017, but from 2018, you hardly hear maybe a cattle herdsman, the cattle herdsmen have killed somebody, they've raped, it has stopped, ceased. And now, because of the good work we've done, we have Asante Achim Agogo Printing Festival. Those days when the menace was at its peak, they were buying plantain and other foodstuffs from Konongo or Ejusu and Jaso. It solved that problem. Two, in 2012, there was a Supreme Court ruling that per the laws, the legal status that was available, the capital of Achuma Kwangoma district should not be at Fuansi, but should be at Chedie. From 2012, they couldn't resolve it. We came in 2017. We were able to honor the ruling of the Supreme Court because we are law abiding and move the capital from Fuansi to Chedie. There was a protracted dispute almost every year since 2012 at between Ashanti youth and Muslim youth, and it's just a road that separates them. A road separates them. Every year there were crashes and people were dying. We solved that. For some time now, nobody has heard of those things. Have you been hearing of highway robberies of leading Ashanti region? So security has improved significantly. Look, when we came there, there were several kidnapping. And I'll give you the two topmost, which was going to bring the reputation of this country down internationally. The first one was a kidnapping of an Indian. Because we rescued him and we didn't bring it out, people did not know. If I tell you the rescues that we're making, even just last week, we made a rescue. Just last week. And you remember the Canadians? We rescued. So when it comes to security and shelter region, no country in this world can eradicate security risk in its entirety. But we've done very well. We've done very, very well. Look, we don't talk. Our strategies are different. We have people, they go and do soup intelligent lead soups. They will come and parade them. Knives, single barrels, double barrels. Uh, if you are lucky, then you have one sophisticated, maybe Pompassion or AK-47, to the full glare of the people. My strategy is not that. What the people of Ashanti region want to hear, that they can sleep and go out and do their work and do it in peace. We do intelligent soup almost every month, but we don't announce. We do, we screen you, 
Those that are found culpable are taken to the law courts. And the law deals with them. That is why I don't hear many people think that we are doing. You see, each of them has positives and negatives. If you arrest one person with a knife, you show it today. Tomorrow you arrest somebody with a single bar, you show it. You are putting fear in the people. That is me. That is what I believe. All that they want is we can go and do our work and come back home. How you do it? So I don't know where this, the news, yes, it came before. There was some time we had even to impose curfew. This one, we got the intelligence very late. Maybe if I had been in Kumasi, I could have had the information a bit early. But I was in Accra to attend several meetings, including the conference of the International Audit Agency at the uh, University of Professional Studies. When I got the information, it was late. So quickly, I called the regional police commander and the other security agents that they should meet and quickly send out a press release that we've heard of this. And if they dare, maybe we would treat them as criminals, not as students. But it was unfortunate. By the time they released, the VC also called me that, no, he's seen that the students are mobilizing. So we had to call the regional police commander that they should get some people quickly and moving. But you see, some people think that uh, when you hear a problem or security issue, straight away you're moving. It's just like a fire officer, and here there's fire in this building. Any intelligent and professional fire officer will first try to look for the source of the fire. The fire officer will not run straight into the fire. Because you cannot extinguish fire just by throwing foam and this thing on the, on the, the main frame. But you have to touch the fire source. So when you want to move in personnel to a crisis zone, you cannot just straight away bring, you come from Tafo, you come from Swami, move these people from Konongo, move these people from Ejoso, just move to the site. No. You have to move them and give them a leader from whom they will be taking instructions from. Other than that, I'm coming from Ejusu, I'll take it from my leader. This one is coming from my home, home uh, area, Bosom Tree. They will take from their leader and will, it will be chaotic. So what you normally do is that you first call the nearest police station, send some few people there and help while we mobilize the needed forces to come and support you. But in that process, it takes some time. Before you can gather them, maybe something might have happened. Thirdly, you cannot just, because you are regional minister and the law, Act 1030 of 2020 gives you the position as the chairman of the Regional Security Council, you just get up and move security personnel to a university campus. No. They have their internal security. So you have to discuss with the VC and the management there before you enter. You can only do that maybe in situations like terrorist situation. That one you can move in time because terrorism, you can't go and discuss with somebody. They might even leak the information. But situations like this, you have to prepare a move in. So it's not that uh, we did not hear but we got the information quite late. Maybe if I had been in Kumasi then and wasn't at a conference or meeting, maybe the situation would have been different. But at least when we heard it and they went there, calm was restored and still calm is restored. Uh, Salam also spoke about teenage pregnancy. I don't know, but uh, once the regional director of Ghana Health Services here, I won't pretend I'm a professional. I'm not. I know nothing about health. So he is here to give you details about what you are saying. If you are dealing with a region like Ashanti, if a population of 5.4 million, 
and then you talk about absolute figures. Eventually, the region with the highest population will come out with the more cases. So if you talk about teenage pregnancy, and then you talk about numbers, a certain region will always be the first. You talk about HIV. So most of the research is based on absolute figures. And you can compare maybe Ashanti with 43 districts to maybe a half hole with 43 or, or six districts. And th that is the reason why most of the time, most of these issues, the violence and all those things that we are talking about is either Ashanti or in Greater Accra. And, and it's so simple. So when you talk of teenage pregnancy, if it's not Greater Accra, it will be Ashanti. If you talk about HIV, if it's not greater a cry, it will be a shanty because we are talking about numbers. And we have the numbers. So that is a very simple reason. And all the violence and other things that we are talking about.